<laughs> Woo! All right. <laughs> no, no, no conversation starters. Um, I don't have anything good. Um. Oh, I do. Oh wait, I can't tell you yet. Okay. Are you going <laughs> you to tell nothing, me? Jeremiah? Yeah, I will. I'm going to tell you nothing. whenever it's uh, what we watch this week. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to tell you anyways. I watched the fifth ele- element last night. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, tell me what you thought about it when we get there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, welcome back. We are the Bonsai Movie Crew. As you can see, Eric still hasn't cut his hair off yet. I wish you'd re- quit referring to my husband as my brother. <laughs> That's really creepy and gross. I was going to say, did I miss something? <laughs> uh no jeremiah is still here he's he's hanging out with us till eric comes back uh i don't even know when that'll be uh, sometime in june isn't it sometime in june so probably about End halfway june. through june something like that um we'll get back in the motion of things like madison won't be here next week again anyway though uh we're making do um jeremiah is a good fill-in he actually knows more about movies than Eric does. <laughs> but it's nice having Eric on because he's like, he's the every man. I think I, I, I talk more than him, too. <laughs> I've noticed sometimes he just sits there. He does. He don't have a lot to say. Yeah. He never he never really has, unless he's joking around about something. Yeah. He's. Yeah. He, I think he just kind of like takes in most of what we say. And he doesn't really have a lot to respond with. A lot of those TikToks that I make are usually something that he's made a joke about. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's it's nice having somebody other than me and Karen who's also knowledge about movies. Mm-hmm. Shit, I don't know nothing. Not right. You're a I'm liar. Oh, no really, really, Madison's here. She's like she's like the on screen pupil. You know what I mean? <laughs> she's like here to learn. I actually I lied. I do have a conversation starter. Oh. I was scrolling through Instagram yesterday, right? Okay. And I saw this, it was a meme. I forget what it was about. It took away from the story completely because it said Nico girl. And I was like, what is a Nico girl? And I guess so I got on Google and I said, what is a Nico girl? Guess what a Nico girl is? A chick who dresses up like a cat. <laughs> what? <laughs> Did you know that already? Well, Nico, just a cat. How do you know that? Because I know stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's like a girl just dressed up like a cat. But it's like N Y K O or something, isn't it? N E K O. How do you know this? Though, like, how do, you, how do you, what's a neat? Ni- what he does in his free time? Nico, it's his own. Business. How is Nico a remember, cat? Remember the whole conversation we had? No. Yesterday about all the weird shit I watched. <laughs> oh, yeah. If I need to tell her something, she's got an ear. <laughs> yeah. It's a Japanese whoa, whoa. word for cat. I got it. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So what do they like dress up like? Do they dress up like actual cats? Or well, are they, they those... put on ears and a tail and they get on all fours. Yeah, there ain't no costume except for that. Except for the ears. Okay. So I've seen and, these stupid ass girls on the, the internet. The tail is probably a fucking butt plug. They probably, anyway. yeah. <laughs> honestly. Yeah. They might, yeah. But like I've seen girls like that on the internet and they, they do that like for TikTok and streaming and that's yeah, how they get. A lot I know. Of I know viewers. what you're talking about. I've seen them too, and they're they're morons. They're interesting. Dude, they're not interesting. They're though. fucking idiots. Yeah, they are. They're idiots, and you people waste your time and money on these people. Just throw I, it I out. Can't believe how Hold popular on, I bet you they is. make a lot of a lot of money on OnlyFans, though. They probably do. I bet you're they absolutely do. correct. Yeah, that's what I need. To There's get a to. kink for everything, I suppose. Yeah. I'm about to. I'm about to get on there. Not anybody kink out shaming. there. Anybody only out there fans, got a daddy kink? Honestly, OnlyFans on is the place. The only place where that really belongs because it's a kink. So that bling that belongs there. Everybody's got a kink. Outside How do you yeah, feel about fans, dad feet? Yeah. I've got dad feet. Not on TikTok though. <laughs> dad feet. Yeah. There's a kink for everything. I'm sure there's I can't say somebody anything. out there. I'm still a minor. No, you don't need to say anything. No. <laughs> That's why I just said that. Ah, <sighs> oh, fuck fucking world we live in oh man anyway uh don't forget about our socials our um tiktok speaking of tiktok um no we don't have an only fans uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, next week we'll have one but it'll only have dad feet on it <laughs> <laughs> that'd be fucking hilarious be. <laughs> uh tiktok um god damn it, i lost my <laughs> 
<laughs> Instagram. Uh, Instagram. X. X and Facebook. And yeah. don't forget, we still got our Discord. It seems like people join the Discord, but nobody ever says anything. No, I'll be shy. We're not mean. Yeah. Unless they just join the Discord to support us and they're like, put us on silent. Or they just watch us or they sit there and laugh at well, us. You can talking. watch us on, on OnlyFans too. Not yet. We if don't we have one. one. <laughs> watch him, not us. I don't know, man. <laughs> Some of the shit that we would like that that video that Alec had posted on there, not on there, but in the, in our like our the gasoline shirt, guy, yeah. yeah. Like if, we, I would love to post shit like that on there, but I don't know how what the age group of the people are, right, right, because like or how inappropriate it might be. Like, what are they gonna do? Cancel our fucking channel? They can't. It's fucking Discord. I so. think I'm too young for that. I thought it was fucking hilarious. It was dude. funny, but but that's some weird shit you'd see in like L.A. or oh. some big ass city. Uh, it sounded like it was maybe Swedish or something. I couldn't tell. Oh, for maybe sure. yeah, because it was it wasn't another country. That's oh fucking... god, burn my eyes. Well, that was fucking funny. <laughs> kind of like how I thought two girls one cup was funny no <laughs> no what you what were you doing when you watched that eating Until, corn dogs yeah that's right <laughs> how'd you feel about that corn dog it was good it was good <laughs> it was good i can separate art from food art <laughs> art is that what you call it <laughs> i don't know if it's art man everybody oh, has their oh, different oh, definitions oh, of art oh. <laughs> I wouldn't call that art. Oh, more like say, fart. Got a different, different definition. <laughs> no, that's more than fart. <laughs> it's like shart. Yeah. Shart. <laughs> oh, man. That's fucking nasty. <sighs> anyway, let's move on here. Let's go ahead and get into our creator profile. I I'm can't sure, guess because I already know. Yeah, I'm sure everybody knows who it is. Because put already it, fucking looking at it. Well, you so. already put it in the thing. Oh, in the group text? I guess the only one. Jeremiah, you know who it is? Uh, Samuel <laughs> Jackson. Yeah. yeah. He guessed it before. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, we've already done Bruce Willis, so. I think we did Bruce Willis for the second Die Hard movie. I think so. And then that's pretty much. I mean, we could have done Jeremy we Irons. Did, but we did that was Professor it. Snape for the first one. Uh, did we? I think so. No, we didn't. I don't, Rickman? I don't think we did, because I don't think we were doing creator profiles when we did the first movie. No, no. I don't think you were. We so. weren't. Should have done him. Yeah, true. We should have. He'd be. He'd have been a good one to do. But then again, we lost our opportuni- an opportunity of doing Stan Lee, too, so that was pretty stupid. But we'll have another opportunity, I'm sure. Yeah, anyway, we have more Spider-Man movies to watch. Huh? There's another Spider-Man movie, so. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get into that creator profile. Uh, are you are you reading it? Uh, yeah. After I write down the timestamp thingy. It's a long one. You know she steals that thing like. I know she does it on purpose. <laughs> yeah, I know because they'll tell me no if not. All right. <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson graduated from Morehouse College in 1972 and began his acting career on stage. A move to New York City led to a friendship with Spike Lee and some of his first movie gigs before he enjoyed a star-making turn with a commanding performance in Pulp Fiction. Jackson became an ub... Oh, God. Ubiquitous? Ubiquitous? What? I don't know. Ubiquitous? Ubiquitous? Ubiquitous. 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 That's a stupid word. Okay. Okay. Presence on the big (laughs) screen. um, Appearing in big budget films like Star Wars, The Phantom Menace, and its sequels, and the numerous installments of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. In 2012, he was named the highest grossing, is it grossing? Grossing. Grossing. Actor of all time with more than 70. $7.2 $7.2 billion in wealth. Early life. Jackson was born Dude on December... Dude fucking loaded, man. I just can't believe how much money... Can you imagine, is. like, even a billion dollars? Yeah, right. Can you a imagine billion. Even... One billion. Yeah. He's can got you... 72. Can you imagine even a million? This dude has... Like, he could stop now I... and a still billion... take care of the next four generations of a his A billion sounds... Like, 
the word billion sounds made up. It really, it mm-hmm. just does. It doesn't sound like a real, like, quantifying trillion. number. Not even trillion does. No. Anything above a million sounds made up. It doesn't sound like a quantifiable number. It doesn't. Yeah, I agree. Because it's not something that's fathomable to us. We'll never own a billion of anything. Like, you can't walk into the bank and go, I want to take out a billion dollars. You can't even do that with a million dollars. No, but at least it, at least you could get a cashier's check. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> you know? I, just... I think if you walked in and said, I need a cashier's check for a billion dollars, they'd probably look at you like, uh... Somebody that's please planet, call the psych time. ward. Yeah, that, that's funny. You're no, funny. No, really. I've got 72 I of them. I just want one. Yeah, they're probably going to be like, I think that kid downtown let out another person from the psych ward again. Like, yeah. Call someone. <laughs> he <laughs> just, donates a lot of money. He though. does. He, he, he does. gives a lot of his money away to charity. But then again, when you've got $72 billion. 7.2. 7.2. Oh, okay. 7.2 billion dollars. That you're going to need a lot of tax write offs, and that's exactly what charitable donations are they're tax yep. write offs. So that's nothing for them. For, I mean, right, all right, not um, to downplay their charitable his money's works, literally just, just sitting there accumulating interest. And like, um, yeah, he walks into the bank and they're like, Do what you do, you need your fucking toes sucked while you're here today. <laughs> they sir. don't, they don't buy <laughs> tissues, they just stuff it with one dollar bills. Yeah, all right, um. Jackson was born on December 21st, 1948, in Washington, D.C., and was raised in Ch- Chattanooga, 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 uh, Tennessee, under his grandmother's strict guidance. His mother, Elizabeth, joined them when he was 10. An early film enthusiast, Jackson frequently saw films at the local theater. You couldn't pronounce local theater? It says locale. <laughs> um, local theater and gain exposure to the complicated <laughs> messages <laughs> uh, messages surrounding it's an older old fashioned way of writing local it's like locale yeah locale the black presence on screen um, versions of band of angels were edited for the black audience in Chattanooga omitting a scene in which Sidney po- Poitier Poitier Poitier, Poitier. Portier. 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 Potty mouth. Potty. Sydney Potty. Okay. Potier. Potier. Um, slaps a white woman. <laughs> <laughs> what? It just sounds hilarious. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Jackson's early memories remained with him when he entered the historically black Morehouse College in Atlanta and become, sorry, became, my bad, dad. <laughs> don't yell, um, increasingly involved in the black Are you happy? Are you going to fuck me up? Come, come, we could use it. I don't know, that blank stare. Give, send me sing- signals, I don't know. <laughs> my stare? I'm not even looking at you. And it was a joke. Oh. Sorry, man. I'm out of it. You can tell. Are you happy or are you going to fuck me up? <laughs> I don't know. Neither, I guess. I'm just here, dude. She's talking about me to you. Oh, I don't give a fuck about you. Oh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jackson's early memories remain. Da, 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 1969, during his junior year, he protested the absence of black people on board of trustees by locking several board members in a building for two days and was promptly expelled from college that same year. Jackson watched and performed a performance by the... I can't say that, actually. Why? I can't say it. It's, it's probably the N-word. N-word. Yeah, it's the N-word. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't say it. You say that like you would have given me permission to say it. No, I wouldn't have. Um, and gained a new inspiration. Acting. After working as a social worker for two years in Los Angeles, Jackson returned to Morehouse to pursue the study of acting and received his degree in 1972. Early stage career. After college, Jackson joined the Black Image Theater um, Company with his future wife, Latanya Richardson whom he met at Morehouse's sister school, Spelman College. 
They toured the country and performed skits characterized by a fiery combination. I don't know if it said fiery or fiery. Um, combination of rage and humor to primarily white audiences. Um, in 1967, having exhausted their enthusiasm for politically charged theater, Jackson moved with Richardson to Harlem, New York City to pursue an acting career outside of such strictly defined perimeters of race. He began to act in off-Broadway productions, including Richard Wesley's The Mighty Gents, an adaption of Bertolt, Bertolt, sure, Wretch's um, Mother Courage and Sam Art Williams' Home. After all, er, he also got a job substituting for Bill Cosby during the Cosby Show rehearsals. Um, collaboration was what? likely. <laughs> What? Why? Don't Who needs a substitute for rehearsals? Like, I don't feel like doing it. You can do it for me. Like, yeah, but then you're not going to know what to do when it's time to act. I was going to say, I thought that, that was, me. I thought the whole point of rehearsal was so that you yeah. knew what to do when it was like time to do it. I gave Bill Cosby enough time to get back behind the scenes. Yeah. yeah. The get back there and uh, <laughs> make those ladies plenty of drinks. Yeah. If you know what I mean. In case they got thirsty. <laughs> I'm thirsty, Bill. Mm. Okay. In eighteen or in 1961, <laughs> while working on Charles's or Charles Fuller's A Soldier's Play, um, Jackson had two life-changing encounters. He met fellow actor Morgan Freeman, who became a great friend and convinced Jackson that he could be a successful actor in New York University. Film student named Spike Lee. I actually get Morgan Freeman and Samuel. Jackson confused all the time. What, do you think just all black people look alike? No, or else I'd get all they of look, them confused together. No, look but nothing alike. Samuel L. Jackson screams just, a lot. Morgan Freeman's very calm, do. cool, and collected. And Morgan Freeman has freckles. Does he? Mm-hmm. I don't see Morgan Freeman in a lot of stuff. That's probably why. He's been in a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, I just guess I just don't watch the right things. Their demeanors are way different. We need to get Sam Jackson, Denzel Washington, and Morgan Freeman. You mean Denzel? Table. Oh, yeah, Denzel. You're the one that always yells at me for Denzel. saying it wrong. My Denzel. Bad. Denzel Washington. Denzel. Yeah, we just need to get them on a round table and just hear them talk about stuff. Oh, Maybe man. That makes sense. That that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> they probably got some shit to say, though. They got a lot of, oh, yeah. They probably got a lot of shit to say. I just sit there and t- I listen. I wouldn't even, mm-hmm. I wouldn't say a word. I just listen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and a New York actor, university film student named Spike Lee, who ap- expressed his enthusiasm for Jackson's performances and urged him to appear in the films he planned to make. Jackson consented and kept his word, appearing in several of Lee's early films, including School Days, Do the Right Thing, and Mo Better Blues. Um, the friendship duly paid off for uh, Jackson as it was his role as the drug addicted gator in Lee's Young Girl Fever uh, that finally grabbed critics' attention and inspired some well earned praise. Judges at the Cannes Film Cannes Cannes Film Festival mm-hmm. created a Best Supporting Actor category to give Jackson the prize. He also received a New York Film Critics Award. Oh, that's just a sentence. No, it's not. It just has a period. Okay, he also received a New York Film Critics Award through playing an on-screen drug demon. Um, Jackson... No, that is one sentence. Okay, through playing an on-screen drug demon, Jackson was forced to confront his off-screen demon. And increasingly destructive addiction to drugs and alcohol, the cathartic nature of his performance enabled Jackson to give up drugs, making it both a personal and professional success. Um, Jackson continued to take small parts in films such as Juice and True Romance and played an FBI agent in the thriller White Sands. Um, exhibiting him his ex- impressive range and ability Who was he to in True add romance? a quirky Bit part. twist to every character. Just like most of the other people. Oh. I'm trying to remember where the fuck he was in the movie. I remember. Uh, in the beginning. In the, towards the beginning. Oh, yeah. 
He yeah. overcame two Hollywood flops. Um, National oh, that's it? Out of all the movies he's made, two of them flopped. <laughs> National Lampoon's Loaded Weapon, I and Amos and Amos and Andrew, by making a by making small but affecting performances in Menace to Society and Patriot Games, and also enjoyed a prominent supporting oh, part in the blockbuster oh, Jurassic uh-huh. Park. Um, breakout role in Pulp Fiction. In 1994, after establishing a reputation as one of Hollywood's hardest working actors, Jackson got a chance to play the pivotal role of his career in Quentin Tarantino's uh, instant cult classic, Pulp Fiction. Working from any actor's dream script, Jackson played Jules Winfield, um, a sermon-spewing killer with eruptive speeches up to five pages long. He moved and terrified audiences with his impassioned performance, becoming the elusive uh, moral center of the psychologically twisted film. He received an Academy Award uh, nomination for the role. He was pretty awesome in it. Mm-hmm. He was probably the best part of that whole movie. Um, films A Time to Kill, Star Wars, and Snakes on a Plane. Jackson went to make several big Hollywood films, including John Gris, Krish, whatever. A John time, Grisham. Hmm? John Grisham. Grisham. John Grisham's A Time to Kill and the other, or in the action thriller, The Long Kiss That's Goodnight. Good movie. Both of them are. Long Kiss Goodnight's awesome. But he continued to participate in independent endeavors, and such as Steve Buscemi's Buscemi. Buscemi's Tree Lo- Trees Lounge. He also made a much desired return to the stage in 1993 with Distant Fires, telling Premier Magazine, "I always want to get back uh, to theater to make sure that I'm still an actor." Cool. In 1999, Jackson appeared in the shark thriller Deep Blue Sea and as Jedi Knight Mace Windu in Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, uh, a role reprised for Attack of the Clones in uh, 2002, and Revenge of the Sith in 2005. The 2000 was a busy one for the popular actor who starred with Tommy Lee Jones in the military thriller Rules of Engagement, and the remake of the classic 1970s black exploitation. Okay, hit Shaft. Um, he also teamed with Bruce Willis in Unbreakable, a supernatural thriller written and directed by M. Night Shyamalan. 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 Shyamalan and Ding Dong. Shyamalan. 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 M. Night Shyamalan. Shyamalan. Yeah. The Y silent. Sure. <laughs> what a twist. <laughs> okay. Um, after starring opposite Ben Affleck. <laughs> you ever seen that? Affleck. Uh, Affleck. 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 I'm surprised I never had him at a commercial. Probably couldn't afford him. Probably not. Not Affleck. anymore. <laughs> no once upon a time, but definitely not now. In 2002's um, Not after Changing Phantoms. Lanes. <laughs> uh, in 2002's Changing Lanes, Jackson tackled the title role of the biopic Coach Charter in 2005. Carter. Carter. Des- Coach, what Coach I Carter. What you I said say? Charter. I did? Yeah. Whoops. I didn't notice. Neither did I. <laughs> we did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the following year, Jackson starred in Black Snake Moan. That's a good movie, too. Weird name. I liked it. And the cult classic Snakes on a Plane. <laughs> and in 2008, he rejoined his You knew fandom. what you were in for. A cult classic, though. What? Snakes you knew what you were plane? in for? Come on. They uh, didn't hide what you were in Well, I know that, you. but... I'm just saying. Anybody who went to see that movie and came out and said, that's stupid, you knew what you were going to see. <laughs> it's literally in the title. I don't know about calling it a cult classic. Yeah, though. that's what I'm saying. What is it? Snakes on a Plane. What would you call yeah. it? A movie, a movie with snakes on a plane. That's the first time I've heard that name mentioned in years. That's I'm true. Being honest. Yeah, that's if it was true. a cult classic, you'd hear more about yeah. it. Yeah. I wouldn't say it was a. Uh, I don't know. It was I, fun. That's what I'm saying. It was fun. So I don't know if you'd call it necessarily Maybe like a, a cult failure. Hit. 
you know, for its time. Yeah. But I wouldn't call it a yeah, classic. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say I it's got long standing. Yeah, but I feel like the longer we go without it, the less people. Yeah, I'm are, not saying it has long you know I mean? standing power, just I, more. I wouldn't. I don't even, I would even say I would call it a cult in any fashion because. Yeah. It's not. People are, people have forgotten. I wouldn't call it a flop is all I'm saying. No, it's not a flop. Yeah. I'm just saying like, I'm just saying like, people I don't know have if forgotten can... about it. Yeah, yeah time. it's forgettable. Yeah, it's forgettable. Okay. Um. Had 15 minutes of fame, pretty much. There you go. That was about it. Based off of one line in the movie. Yeah. yeah. I'm tired of these <laughs> motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane. plane. Of course he said that, because he says motherfucker in everything he's in. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's paid a lot of money to say it. Mm-hmm. And in 2008, he rejoined his Phantom Menace colleague, Hayden a Chris Christensen. Christensen and Jumper to add to his many successes the Guinness Book of World Records. Guinness. Or whatever. Uh, no, records. not whatever. It's very famous. <laughs> yeah, everybody in middle school always had the book, and whenever I tried to check it out, I never could, so I became uninterested, and therefore, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Because of her personal reasons, <laughs> it doesn't matter. No. <laughs> um. Anyways, that's another movie though, Jumper. That, like, I think they were trying to spawn a franchise, and it just went nowhere after the first. I movie. never even saw it. You never saw it. You know, it's not bad. It's a good movie. I'm sure it is. I just never. It, had was, any... it was cool for its time because there wasn't movies out there. It was we weren't oversaturated with the mar- you know, with superhero movies and yeah. stuff like that. And it was essentially a guy who can who can teleport. Yeah, I just here there is a J, not a G. Therefore, it is Guinness. What? It's Guinness. Guinness Book of World Records. But now there's a J, so now it's Guinness. You changed the spelling yourself? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm pretty sure with a G, a J, you can still say Guinness, can't you? No. <laughs> I don't know of any instance where that's a thing. No? Okay. (laughs) That's because he doesn't know how to spell words. It's okay. You're the one who just spades. Never mind. Just (laughs) He doesn't know how to talk. I don't know how to talk right now either. (laughs) Okay. Um, the Guinness Book of World Guinness Records. Guinness Guinness Book. Records. Guinness Book of World Records. Records. Just read the fucking thing and say Guinness. I did. It's a, I award you no there. points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Yeah. Which one of us? Both of us? You. Roll on. You award me no points, and <laughs> Roll him, on. he has mercy on his soul, I take it. You're killing me, Smalls. Okay. 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 I hear you. Um, Name Jackson the highest grossing movie actor of all time in 2011. Are you starting Josing? There's an R there, so. Drossing? I mean, if you want to believe that, then go ahead. I'm not stopping you. <laughs> this is why kids think they're different genders and they all think they're cats. <laughs> what are you trying to say to me right now? <laughs> the preferred term is Nico. Mm. I just yeah. found out. <laughs> are, you a, are you a Nico girl? Does it look like I own a pair of cat hails and a or cat hairs <laughs> and a <butt> plug? <laughs> oh boy! No, no, I don't own that a makes butt me plug. a Nico. A Nico dad. I got some cat ears and a butt oh plug. Oh my god! If I show up next week, he's got cat ears on. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm gonna buy him one of the. I'm gonna buy him the headphones. Oh, make sure they're sparkly. <laughs> <laughs> he could be a gamer girl. Can you do the voice? Do the voice. Ew. Or is it? Is it ew? Ew. 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 Woo. Woo. You gotta say. <laughs> what are you ew. talking about? It's like ew. D-W-U. Yeah. You guys got you guys got dark vo- or deep voices. Do the auto auto one. Huh? They also say, auto auto. Say it like that. Go ahead. Auto auto. No, you gotta. S- what? I have, I have no, no idea, idea what's going yeah, on. What am I saying? That one, I don't know. Oh, look at it. Well, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I know what the ooh ooh one is because these girls like think it's cute to like, like do this like ooh ooh, and they'll like almost cross their eyes, look at the camera. 
it's so weird. Like, I think I think it turns on a bunch of fanboys. Yep. It's it's fucking weird. The internet's full of weird people anymore. Um, I'm strange. I didn't say you were strange. I just said if you had anything you wanted to tell me, it was okay. Auto auto means my my. <laughs> oh dear, or oh me oh my. <laughs> I don't know. What, whatever, man. Just keep reading. You fucking kids trip me out anymore. I'm sorry. I don't understand. I'm about to go find I'm a mountain so and live on it. And like, just I shut told you we off. should buy land and roll out. Nids. <laughs> Nids. Oh, God. Okay, okay, okay. I just got a couple. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, this. Okay. Samuel, I, Samuel L. Jackson no, wouldn't approve of any of this. No. Hey, you remember when they did the parody on Chappelle? The Samuel, uh, Samuel Jackson beer? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Instead of... Uh, I don't remember... Like, I remember the beer itself, but I don't remember what the whole shtick was. I don't either. I just remember him being in costume. Bunch of screaming, like, it'll get you drunk! Or yeah. something like that. Get you drunk, motherfucker? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, at the time he was named the highest grossing film actor Jackson was just beginning his run as Nick Fury Adams. at Marvel Cinematic yeah. Universe after appearing during the end credits of 2008 Iron Man his character returned for the 2010 sequel in uh, subsequent films to introduce the other, other Marvel superheroes including Thor 2011 Captain America the First Avenger 2011 in the Winter Soldier 2014, The Avengers 2012, Age of Ultron 2015, Infinity War 2018, and Endgame 2019. Can you believe them in making them and movies for Captain like Marvel almost 20 years now? You've seen all of them? I have. I haven't seen the new ones. I haven't seen the new Miss. I haven't seen the Marvels. I haven't seen anything past Endgame. Oh, I've seen past that. I watched uh, last year. I think the last one Maybe I watched. I watched was Black all Widow. fucking twenty three of them. Black Widow. I think that, that movie was, was garbage too. One. That movie wouldn't have been good. Could have been way better. Best part of those movies is seeing Scarlett Johansson run around in spandex. No. I don't care what anybody says. Yes, I will sexualize her, because people sexualize her already. She's the one who gets in them outfits. I'm just saying. Anyway, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Additionally, Jackson has appeared as Fury in the TV series Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, later films, I'm not even going to try to say that. The Hateful Eight and Glass. Along with Django his- Unchained. Yeah, it's Django. How do you know that? It's not dumb. It's actually a really good movie. It's a very good movie. Mm-hmm. That's how come we know. It's funny because... Samuel L. Jackson plays a character that pretty much hates slaves. Like mm-hmm. he, he was like, I don't know. <laughs> it's fucked oh. up. It's a Quentin Tarantino movie. Mm-hmm. Along with his lucrative work for Marvel, Jackson reunited with Tarantino for the Django? Yes. Unchained 2012 and The Hateful Eight 2015 with Lee for Ch- Chirac. Uh, 2015, he assumed and patented military commander type role for Kong School Island in 2017 and revised two of his older characters in 2019 with the unbreakable sequel Glass as his new version of Shaft. Oh my god, he's been in so many movies. He's been in a lot of fucking movies. Especially in recent years, like from like 2000 to now. He blew up. Yeah, his, his IP just went fucking insane. Um, the veterinarian actor opened 2020 on a strong note with... You mean the veteran? Is that, veteran? What did you say? Veterinarian. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he might work on animals in, in this downtime. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I love you, Madison, so much. <laughs> um, the veteran... <laughs> <laughs> um, actor opened 2020 on a strong note with the theatrical release of the well-received war drama The Last Full Measure, which featured Peter Fonda as his final role before joining MCU colleague Anthony Mackie in the biopic The Banker. I remember that movie. We watched that in history. It was boring. 
I don't think I've ever even heard of it. it was good, but I thought it was boring because they made us watch it in history. Personal life. Jackson Richardson married in 1980, and they currently um, reside in California. They have one child together and a daughter named Zoe. Uh, when a reporter asked why his wife stayed with him during his wilder years, he replied, She always says to me that I have now grown into the man that she always knew I could be. And that is why we marry people. Hmm. He's a faithful dude. He stayed. He's been with the same woman for a long time. And you don't ever see her out in public with him or nothing either. I think she lives a very secluded life. Yeah. Like stays out of the Well, shit. when they were younger, she did, but not so much yeah. anymore. All right. Favorite favorite uh, Samuel L. Jackson movie. Everybody go. All Unbreakable. Ones. Unbreakable. And Glass, I guess. The whole East Rail Marvel trilogy, but he was only count. in the two. I really like that character. Right. Basic. Basic? Basic's a good one. I really like Basic. It's a good one. What's yours? Marvel movies don't count. Yeah, they count. If he's in them. I like the Avengers a lot. It's one of my favorite movies. Yeah, I guess. I don't care. I like Uh, it. Damn, he's done a lot of movies, man. It's hard to pick one. Uh, I guess I could say Kill Bill because he's technically in the second one. Like, <laughs> I was gonna say true romance. Face, but... I could say true romance, but he's in it for like a blip of yeah, a second. Right. I wouldn't That's, count that. I wouldn't. I couldn't count it. I'm gonna say probably Pulp Fiction's really good, and so it. But so is like Django Unchained and The Hateful Eight. Mm-hmm. Man, but he's done so many fucking hell. Fucking Long Kiss Goodnight is awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh. Man, it's tough. It's, it's tough hard for me because he's done a lot of really good movies. Black Snake Moan is a really good one. I really love his character in that one. Um, and I'm gonna go off of his character alone, like it, my favorite character of his. And I think if I was gonna choose that, I would probably say Pulp Fiction because his character in Pulp Fiction Fiction's amazing. He's the he's the best part of that whole movie, hands down. He's gonna be in that new Garfield movie. Yeah, he plays the Garfield's dad. John. Huh? John? Or the cat dad? No, no the cat. cat. Dad. Yeah, the cat dad. They're like, yeah, this movie's going to flop. So <laughs> Throw a name in there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go with probably Pulp Fiction, just because of his character in Pulp Fiction. But if it wasn't for his character, like my favorite movie of his would probably be... Mm-mm. I don't know. There's I lied. I forgot he was in the movie uh, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. I love that mo- movie with a burning passion. He plays as the monster guy. Mm-hmm. I like it when he plays bad guys. Mm. He really doesn't do it very often. It. When he does it, he's it's pretty good. He's really good at it. So, but yeah, I like. There's he, he's done too many fucking movies, man. Just too many to like nail one down, you know? Because he's done a lot of good shit. Anyway, uh, that's Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, Let's move on. Let's get into what everybody's been watching this week here. What the hell have you been watching? Let's start with Jeremiah, man. What'd you watch? Same thing she did. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where's it at? Right here. Uh, blockers. Uh, Boy Kills World. It's fucking excellent. I Isn't haven't. I want. I I have it, and I want to watch it's it. It's fucking excellent. Is it? I yeah. keep hearing good things. So. Yeah. What would we? Would we fucking buy macarons? Based off, there's there's a scene in there where he has to act like a chef, so he just starts fucking like shoving macarons into his mouth, and talking about how fucking delicious they were. We never had them, so I went out. You know who voices him, right? Yeah, it's John Benjamin. Yeah, the guy who does Archer. Yeah. So I went out to Kroger's and ended up getting some. They were actually pretty fucking good. (laughs) They were. were. He wasn't lying. Man, these fucking things are good. Um, you want to do next one? Friday the 13th, fuck. Jack wanted to watch it. The Which original. one? The first, first one. one. The first one. Yeah. He's was like, he expecting to see Jason? and? Yeah, he was, he's was. he been playing the game, and he's kind of obsessed with it right now, so he was like, can we watch the Jason movies? And I'm like, sure. So we watched the first one, and before we watched the first one, mind you, he was like, we're going to watch three a day until they're, they're done. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, right? So we watched the first one. And that was it. So I'm pretty sure he's... He's just done with it. He might be done with the movies at this point. Because <laughs> right. we watched it and he was like, so it was his mom. I'm like, yeah. 
and I was going through, you know, like the final girl and how she just dropped everything. Like she'd pick something up and like just drop it, pick something up and drop it. And he was like, yeah, that was really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're coming out with a, uh, um, that Killer Cons from Matter of Space game is yeah. going to be like that Jason game. Yeah. yeah. It's supposed to be the same. He loves Killer Clowns. So dude. he might like that game. It comes out. On the seventh, I would think, or the fourth. Oh, we might. It comes out like in a that. week. It comes out in like a week. Might have to look at getting. You know, that. my manager recommended that. If week. you if you buy it now, actually, if you buy it now, you get to play it early. So like you can pre-purchase the game and play it early, like seven days early. So just so you're you aware. Know how much you love and I think them. it's only like thirty or forty bucks for the game. Dude, I I showed him that movie. When's his birthday? It's in December. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so. I showed him that movie. He's buying the damn game. Well, I, I would buy it, you know, for uh, all of us, but right. he'd end up being the one playing it. But, like, like I, was, I showed him that movie, and, dude, he watched it, I swear to you, over and over and over again for, like, months. And then he had to be the little one for, like, Halloween that year. Oh, my God. It was insane over that movie for a while. That's a good dude. Movie. If you want me to take him trick or treating movie. this year, because I take the boys trick or treating last year, I'll take him trick or treating. I'll dress up as a clown with him. I don't know if he'd want to do it again, but he still has the co- the costume. So he doesn't have to be the same clown. I'll get him a new costume. I don't care. <laughs> he loves Shorty. Shorty. Shorty's his favorite. That's he said he got fun. the he actually got the costume with the the um the boxing, the boxing gloves. gloves. <laughs> really? And he'd walk around going put up dukes, put up dukes. <laughs> 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 um bruce almighty that was another one jack wanted to watch um the innocents far from home the beekeeper oh God. you didn't like it eh, it was okay i thought it was all right it was a pretty big you know, it was you know it was a Standard action movie. it brought me it, it definitely flick. put me back in the old action flick yeah know? it's definitely an old you know that it's it's predictable action formula, but mm-hmm. it was it was better than I anticipated. Yeah, I like the ending. I do too. And uh, we did kind of a Fred Olin Ray double feature yesterday. Uh, what is it? Fred Olin Ray. He's a kind of like a B rated. He was well, yeah, 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 yeah back over in the, the day. past ten years or so. He ain't did nothing but like Christmas, Christmas movies, movies, Hallmark for shit, some fucking weird reason. But uh, Evil Tunes. Which he made a point to show each girl's titties <laughs> twice. Yeah, at least. Like, even the nerdy egghead chick, like, <laughs> somehow, like... We only get to see those ones, though. The whore convinced her to get naked. We only see put hers Put that cookie ones. down! Oh, Sorry. Yeah. yeah, put that cookie down. <laughs> yeah. We only get to see hers uh, once. And then, uh, Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers. Yeah. Which had Gunnar Hansen in it, yeah. and he was the... The cult leader. Cult pimp. Cult pimp leader. Yeah. yeah. Of the Chainsaw Girls. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of neat. It's Jesus good time. Jesus Christ, man. Yeah. What if I put M&M's in the freezer? I, I say we make a weekend out yeah, of it. get sometime. frozen chocolate. Yeah. Dude, they'll be so good. Okay. Why don't you just put a Hershey bar in there? That's what I do. Because I have M&M's, not a Hershey bar. Yeah. Talking about those M&M's? Yeah, those M&Ms. <laughs> <laughs> About to get up, get up. You do you. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, what did you watch, Madison? Guess. Three guesses. Guess what season I'm on. <laughs> season 12. 12. Shut up. You said to guess. I already told you. It's not no, you guessing didn't. if you know. You were still on 11 whenever I talked to you last about <laughs> no, it. No, I said I'm I almost guessed, on right? season 12. That's he, like he telling did, you He did actually guess 12. Oh, he seriously? Did, yeah. I am on season Me and your dad 12 actually now. said it at the same time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> season 12, good for of you. Of Supernatural. And his mom just came back from the dead, which I already knew that would happen because I watched this that episode. I with hated dad that. Dinner. It's stupid. It's part of the reason why I've slowed down on the show. I'm just like, I hate Duh. Mary. Mary's character is stupid. I'm she just, is stupid. I'm speed running She's through the last stupid. three seasons, you guys. I'm speed running I cannot through these stand ones. Mary. I don't really like her much either. She's uh, probably the worst decision that they made in that whole freaking show. Yeah, and then like, why didn't they let? They should have let the Roadhouse people and just kept Mary dead. Yeah, I would have. I think one of the mean, worst things about the show, though, Ash Roadhouse people. Yeah, What's Ash Roadhouse and people. Ash and uh, the Roadhouse bar. Yeah, the Roadhouse bar. Like Joe Ash and them. And, yeah, oh, Joe yeah. and yeah, keep all them people and keep Mary out of it. Yeah. 
Do or why didn't they bring back? his dad back instead? Like, why did they bring Mary back? Like, I don't know. So dumb. Like, and and the girl says, "I'm gonna bring back something you need now." Like, I don't think he needed his mom. No, he needs his dad. Yeah, I don't think he needed his mom anymore, though. I don't know. It's, He's that a thirty-seven-year-old man. The show just gets kind of like. It's like Logan said. He told me he said, "You know, how, where do you go after you fucking?" beat god in her his sister like after that what do you do with the show i did call chuck being god though did like you? long before like when he was the um the scribe right. or whatever it was prophet and yeah the prophet before like while he was the prophet i said i think he's god and jeremiah was like what do you mean and i was like i think he's god and then when he disappeared at the end and i was like i think he's god there you go and then later he came back and i was like he's god and he's like it still doesn't make sense for him to be God, and then like later it's on, it's like, kind of dumb. He's totally God. It's a good use of that character. I guess. Oh, I thought I, I thought I, Chuck being God was actually pretty I thought, cool. I like Chuck, so but I hated that he was like a bad guy because I hated what they did with his character. Yeah. I hated that whole arc. I thought that was so dumb how they they, they could have done so much more with that that storyline. I feel like I think you know? the whole show when was he a bad guy? Has. Well, as God, he's a bad guy. He's kind of a bad guy. He goes guy on a guy. power trip, and he, like, that didn't seem like Chuck at all. Like, as a, it just, I didn't, I, they could have done so much more with that, that storyline, and they could have done more with it. That they definitely didn't know sense. that he was God in the beginning. Or they first made his character, because, like, he had, had Chuck fallen in love with this girl, blah, 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 mm-hmm. this and that. It's like, okay, you didn't know he was God before all that. Mm-mm. So. I had weird. a feeling, though, just because, of, like, he disappeared and just this certain little nuances with the way that he wrote things it just seemed like they had something bigger in mind with him and i was like i think he's gonna be god i think they're going in that direction and it turned out he was whatever anyway you probably found out you were like oh, i knew it i did i i didn't spit out, spit out my candy or anything but yeah, i did <laughs> you mess down there <laughs> anyway <laughs> is that all you watched no i watched the uh, fifth element and i loved it that's I amazing i know i love the girl with the orange hair i, th- I loved her outfit yeah, it was kind of it was kind of a, a lot but i loved it mm-hmm. a lot because i think it just went with her it was amelia really jovovich movie. she's been in all kinds of shit mm-hmm. she was in all the resident evil movies unfortunately unfortunately yeah because wasn't her husband the one who directed The Fifth Element? Well, he became her husband after the movie. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Her, and him, her and him actually... Yeah, the movies, that whole fucking string of movies, the shitty movies that they did. Yeah, her and, her and him were She's actually the, the only character. two that could s- uh, speak the language, the divine language. She actually learned how to speak it, mm-hmm. and he knew how to speak it because he made it up. Wait, what? I wasn't listening. The divine language that she speaks. Yeah. Him and her and the director, they ended up getting married. She learned the divine language, and he could speak it too because he made it up. They made it up and made their own language. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yep. I love that movie. Bitch, man, I used to have a hot the hots for her bad back in the day. She's very pretty. She's very pretty. Mm-hmm. All right. Perfect. Is that it? Um, I think so. Yeah. Uh, I didn't watch much either. I watched, um, we finished the first season of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Um, and then we watched, uh, we're still, I think we watched one more, another episode of uh, The Outer Range with Josh Brolin and that. We still have, we're not like getting in any hurry to finish the show. Um, and then we watched uh, Sting, that movie about the spider, the big spider. No. Was that? Is that an older movie? No, it just, no, came, it just out. came out. I was thinking of that one that we watched. That was uh, it had that giant. I think I had a giant spider. The one with the dinner party people or whatever, and there was like all those bugs. But I think that might have been called Stung or something. I have no idea what you're talking about. It was on Hulu. Oh. Stung. Yeah, Stung. Oh yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah that one's older. Yeah, that's what I was asking. No, this one's just called Sting. It's about these people who live in an apartment complex, and the spider—it's—it's it's an alien spider. It like comes it in at the very beginning. Of course, it's it is. Twenty fifteen. That's fucking nine years old. 
It's not that old. That's an older movie. I said older. <laughs> it's not that old, you guys. Nine years ago is kind of old for a movie. No. uh You're talking about the difference between two decades. Anyway. Uh... Anyway, the movie, it's like, but it's about a spider that comes in, and it comes in in, like, this, like, little meteor, and it lands inside this apartment complex, and it, it like, starts out eating cockroaches, blah, 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 and then it moves on to, like, eating people, obviously, and it just gets bigger and bigger. It's it's pretty good. It's a good short, it wasn't too long, which is what I liked about it. It was about an hour and a half long, and it was good, short, sweet, and it had a couple of good kills in it, and... If you don't like spiders, that's a good horror movie for you. I don't care for spiders all that much, but I don't think it would bother me. It didn't bother me that much, but like Madison couldn't sit through it. I don't like spiders. So, um, anyway, that's that's all I watch. I didn't really watch anything else. I didn't have much time this week. Um, did you miss our what you've been watching? Yeah, it was around forty minutes or so. Um, no, it wasn't. But whatever. Forty-five minutes. What was around then? If you know. What? Do you know? No, I don't know. Then it was around 40 minutes. Oh my God. I'd rather have Jackson sitting here. At least he doesn't argue with me. <laughs> it makes for fun, though. <laughs> he just sits here in silence and just kind of takes it in. <laughs> Wait, the, our cat never came back this week. No, he was here last week, though. Yeah. Maybe he's just running late. Maybe. He was here last week? Yep. Yeah. Seriously? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Show already started. He's only missed half the show. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's dead. all we watched. Let's move on here. Let's get into uh, <laughs> Let's get into our movie this week. Let's talk about the movie. Oh. This week we watched uh, Die Hard with a Vengeance. Woo! Which I don't understand the name with a vengeance. Die hard with a vengeance. He brothers died after revenge. Hard at huh? the the brothers after a vengeance. Revenge. I know, but with a vengeance. Yeah. He's... Yeah, he died with a vengeance. Yeah. He still had it. Yeah, he did. He still had his. He never got his vengeance, <laughs> so he died with he it. Died pretty hard with a vengeance. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we got there. Die hard too. Die harder. Yeah, die harder. Yeah. <laughs> they died pretty Which hard. Which is still one of the best names. <laughs> yeah, that it that really time. is. Die hard. Die harder. <laughs> <laughs> you can't write this stuff. That might know. be the best title in film history. I don't think I ever realized that it was called Die Harder until no. we did the movie. I'm like, this movie is called Die Hard. Die Harder. Uh huh. <laughs> Which only Rennie Harlan. Only. Yeah. Yeah, fuck that guy. <laughs> anyway, Amazing. anyway, um, I'm just glad that this wasn't a Christmas movie because it had some references. I was in there. gonna say there's so many Christmas there's references. There's a lot of references though. in yeah. there, like I'm Santa Claus. Ah, uh, you know. Blah, blah, yeah, did blah. you see the guy going down here? He had eight reindeer dressed on red. Blah blah blah. Yeah, really jolly smile. <laughs> yeah, goes by the name of Santa Claus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Got some rosy cheeks. All right, anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and get into this one, and uh, Karen's going to give us our plot. New our... York Detective. Oh, sorry. No, you're good, man. <laughs> Have at it. New York Detective John McClane is back and kicking bad guy butt in the third installment of this action pack series, which finds him teaming with civilian Zeus Carver to prevent the in- loss of innocent lives. <laughs> McClane thought he'd seen it all until a genius named Simon engages McClane, his new partner, and his beloved city in a deadly game that demands their concentration. You mean Jesus? Yeah, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Two hours and eight minutes, rated R. Bruce Willis as McClane, Samuel L. Jackson as Zeus Carver, Jeremy Irons as Simon. Uh, yeah, that's, I guess, really it. Kyra Sedgwick's brother. Yeah. Somewhere in there. Somewhere. Who? Kyra Sedgwick. Uh, Kevin Bacon's wife. Her brother's in there. Play some dude named Rolf. But I don't even think you ever hear the name Rolf at all. Mm-mm. Yeah. Rolf Robert Sedgwick. Like, he's like way down here. Which one is he? I mean, what does he look like? Mm. I don't know. I can look it up. Um. So I know that one of the henchmen from The Mask was in this movie. You just don't see him very much. 
The one with the with the rat tail from the mask, with the bald head and the rat tail. You know which yeah. one I'm talking about? No. I do. He was one of the henchmen for uh, the mob guy. Adrian? For Adrian, yeah. But Man, he's you know how long it's been since I've seen that. But he was like, he's very, yeah. like, you could barely see him. You like barely notice him in the movie. Oh. Oh. That's Rolf. Who's Rolf? What's he look like? Huh. Not sponsored. Who is he? Who was he in the movie? Oh, he was the uh, he was dressed like the cop. cop. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the cop. Yeah, uh, yeah was that's definitely her brother. You can see it now. Yep. Yeah. Do you want an M&M? No. Oh, he was in Tales from the Dark Side. He was the the chick's boyfriend. I never seen it. You never seen Tales from the Dark? Uh-huh. Nah. No, it's chocolate. She don't like chocolate. I feel like trying I to find that. this dude. I'm- of course he doesn't have a fucking well actually it depends on what's with it like she'll eat a rollo because it's got caramel she'll eat caramel cadbury eggs regular cadbury eggs too like those dollar candy bars you get yeah. from fundraisers she'll eat the caramel chocolate ones yeah i don't see him on here oh wait there sure he is <laughs> his name is nils allen stewart he's been in a bunch of stuff probably one of those guys he's one of those guys you're like oh it's that guy you see his face and you're like oh yeah, yeah. i know that guy what was he in i wonder if he's even credited as being in uh die hard three <laughs> henchman <laughs> that's what i mean that's what he would be he'd be a henchman henchman number five what year did uh die hard with vengeance come out 95 95 oh let's keep scrolling here though i knew there was a five in it dude this dude's done a lot of fucking movies <laughs> Holy oh shit. God. Oh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, that guy. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty sure he was the one shooting Stanley when he was in the on that stage or whatever. Mm-hmm. He was yeah. Doing that yeah. Weird. Yeah. Dodging the bullet shit. Yeah. Trying to see. I'd say 95 it came out. 95. Oh, damn. I'm just. It's There's so many. So 94, he was in The Mask. See here, ninety five, Raw Tower. Yeah, da, 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 ninety five. I don't see it. Maybe I'm wrong. Ninety six. I feel like he was probably in well, I don't know. I think the mask came out after Die Hard, didn't it? After... No, it's nineteen ninety five, Die Hard with the Vengeance. Hmm. Maybe he wasn't credited in Die Hard with the Vengeance. Might not have been, because you can barely see him. Pretty sure that's... Yeah, that was him. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, let's uh, go around the table here. Would you watch? Would you recommend Madison? Yeah, I would watch and recommend, but you kind of have to see... I mean, you don't have to see the other ones to watch this one, but it's kind of recommended. Kind of goes along with the story a little bit, yeah. slightly. Um, yeah, I would totally watch and recommend uh, these movies. Are this movie's quality is fuck? It's probably the best one of the whole, the whole series. This was actually the first one I ever saw. Like in general, like before, um, no, I had never, I had never watched, had never watched the first one until he made me watch it like a couple years ago. Yeah, for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I actually, I think I like the first one better. You still like the first one better? Mm. A lot of people do. But yeah, I'd watch it recommended. Right. Yes and yes. Yes and yes. Damn fucking cords. You okay over there? You put them there. Madison, nobody asked me. <laughs> you lit, dude. I like the, the lone wolf <laughs> thing you. of the first one. The what? The lone wolf thing of the I first one. I do too, one. but I like I like him having... Uh, I like the Sam L. Jackson Yeah, I like, I like the back and forth. It, it, it adds a comedic element, yeah. but... I just And I, I think that's what they were trying to go for there too mm-hmm. a little bit like all right well he's always on his own let's give him like Yeah, you definitely have a a partnership there in this one. You have like a a team thing and you get the comedic element. You get a little more out of it. I just I don't know. That I like and that. a lot of things they argued about and how they said everything was yeah. like, "Oh, they would actually say it like that." Yeah. 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 yeah I just like how rough. he had to be so like um in inventive in the first one and he had to you know i just like that yeah i really like the first one a lot too i like that one more than all of them that i've seen 
Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead. Uh, there's five of them. Five there's two more that came out late, much, much later. I say how weird live, you guys I've only seen up to four. I don't know if I've ever seen the fifth. The only other one I've ever seen, I, I saw this one. Then I saw the one that had Justin Long in it. That's Live Free Die Hard. Where can you go That's the fourth one, right? That's the fourth one. Okay, I don't okay. think I've seen the fifth one. The fifth one is uh, A Good Day to Die Hard. And then I saw the first one. And then the second one. Um, yeah, the fifth one is the one with um, J- uh, Jai Courtney. Plays his son. Hmm. And it's over in, I believe, Moscow or some shit. It takes okay. place in Russia. Where can you go with the story after that, though? Well, I mean, the the last two were more about him and his kids. Like, the first, the, the Live Free Die Hard has him and his daughter. And and then the f- fifth one is him trying to go over to Moscow or whatever. And he's trying to bring his son home. You know, the his only son's reason also you, an operative of some kind. You know the only reason you never see Holly again? Why? Um, she was actually, they were actually supposed to be married, like, for the rest of the thing, like their their marital problems were supposed to go away, and they were going to be happily married. Um, but the actress just didn't want to do it anymore. Why? So just bring back a different actress. And nobody cares. I don't think people would accept that as well. No, she people, was in the people first really two. don't. Yeah, people really don't respond well to that usually. And why do that if you can just write her out completely? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. all right. Anyway, they were already, they already and... set that up as you know they were having marital right. problems. They might as well just go. You know what? Divorce. All right. All right. I'm going to go ahead and read this. Um, All right. So uh, the antagonist in this movie is Simon Gruber, uh, played by Jeremy Irons, the brother of Hans Gruber, Alan Rickman, who, like Irons, was an English actor playing a German. German (laughs) Yeah, no shit. His German accent. (laughs) Who's that? Jeremy Irons? Yeah. Like it 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 was like good. Like he starts. It's funny because he starts out at the beginning of the movie. With like a solid German accent. Yeah, it was like... And then it seems like as the movie goes on, he just kind of loses his accent. Well, that was like Hans and Die Hard. Yeah, like... He, like his went back and forth so much. Yeah. I guess it's kind of... Yeah, maybe they... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're brothers, so... I don't. He just sounded like some like high school drama kid. Like just trying to do a German accent. Yeah. But he did. I he did look like he could be his brother with blonde hair. Honestly, like he I did, thought he, he did too. He I could thought pass he for it. it. He did. They he, did good well, for that. Well, even their accents and everything, like it, it sounded. They sounded mm-hmm. similar. Like okay. I think the part or the part of his accent that kept getting to me was when he would do the, um, we you know like we, you know, z z. You know, it's like I don't think Germans really enunciate that that well. That it's the neighbors. That dude next door does not give a shit about anybody's. Doesn't care. He'll be out here at eleven o'clock at night, banging around. Mm-hmm. His lights on in his garage, shining up through my bedroom window. Everything. He does not fucking care. Does not give a shit. Man. I'm gonna end up going. You off never. On him. You never get lucky with neighbors. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna end up going off on him one day. I'm like, dude. Have He's in his con- like early. Have some or courtesy. Is that the one with the giant sloth in the garage? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he thinks he's cool because he's got this shitty Jeep next door that it doesn't have a muffler and it's loud as fuck. Yeah, it's very annoying. And he'll st- we'll be like almost asleep and he'll start that fucker up. Like, God damn you, dude. Like, it's really annoying. Well, when he leaves the top off, I'm going to just like I'm throw up- some paint in it. No, if he ever leaves the top off up and I'm upstairs, then I'm going to piss right out my window and do a <laughs> That smells like piss in here. They'll do it too. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> oh shit. So annoying. Anyway, uh, Hans was a German criminal who was killed by McLean, and the climax in the climax of Die Hard, the first film in the series. Uh, it first appears as though Gruber is out to avenge his brother's death, but it uh, is later revealed that other motives are at work. He begins by blowing up a bomb in a busy street and telling the police, uh, calling himself uh, Simon, that McLean must walk through Harlem displaying a sandwich board reading, I hate the N-words. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, when some offended uh, African Americans threaten him, they are held back at gunpoint by a shopkeeper and black activist Zeus Carver. Carver gets McLean away, not out of concern for a white man, but that the colleagues of a white cop might go gunning for every black man in the area 
if one of their own is killed. He's not wrong, actually. Like, it's not good news whenever you kill a cop. Uh, Simon now insists that this good Samaritan has become part of the game, whether he likes it or not. Simon has planned real, or sorry, planted real as well. What the fuck am I reading? Simon has planted real as well as phony. Okay, so I just didn't. I need to continue reading it <laughs> to understand what I was reading. Just keep going. <laughs> yeah. Uh, throughout the city, forces um, McLean and Carver to participate in a game of Simon Says, which usually consists of giving them information about a bomb and giving them a chance to defuse it. The first game happens at a public telephone. Simon calls the calls and reads them. Uh, they uh, the as I was going to Saint Ives Riddle. Oh, okay, so that's the name of the riddle, I suppose. Uh, to answer, huh? You suppose? I suppose, yeah. To answer the riddle, McLean needs to dial five five five, following uh, followed by the answer within thirty seconds. They make the call, but uh, are 10 seconds late. Simon laughs and says there is no bomb since he didn't say Simon says. Which was pretty hilarious. It was pretty <laughs> funny, though. I know. I remember that one guy was like, because they like dove and shit. Well, and that one guy's like, York. he like, Welcome John McClane stands up and that dude's like looking at him like, just staring at him. Like, I like that the, the one guy gave him money. Like, yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah and another guy goes, Welcome to New York. Yeah. <laughs> uh, McClane is told they have half an hour to go. To a phone at a subway station near Wall Street. From there, they are on the Upper West Side. To do this, McLean drives through Central Park and makes a radio call for an ambulance, which they follow through heavy traffic. So there's one problem, one glaring problem that I have with this movie, and we'll get to that at the end with the ending. I wonder if it's the same problem I have. I have a couple of problems with the ending, but this is one glaring problem that I, I just it bothers the shit out of me. It's not necessarily a problem. It's just a thing. This is a problem. Okay. It's more of a. I would even. I would even almost go as far as calling it a plot hole. Like it's just, yeah. Um, only Zeus makes it to the station to pick up the call. Simon says that McLean's absence is a breach of the rules, and the bomb is detonated. But it turns out that Simon intended for the bomb to go off anyway, since an activation switch was placed on the subway tracks to detonate the bomb. Once the subway car hit the switch. After the bomb is detonated, they must go to another park to answer another riddle. The same, uh, th the, this time Simon says, What has four legs and is always ready to travel? Zeus figures out that it is an elephant, and they find a briefcase uh, bomb in an elephant found, uh, fountain in the park. After a short argument, on whether to open the briefcase, John decides to open it. When he does, the an LCD screen reads, I am a bomb. You have just armed me. Simon then calls them again, telling them they, ha they must uh, use a five-gallon and a three-gallon jug to put exactly four gallons of water on the bomb scale to disarm it, which they do in the nick of time. Uh, I don't understand. How do they do that? I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention whenever they were doing it. Because it was like, they somehow or another, they do five gallons. They do three gallons into one and blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, you're still, like, how do you exact get exactly four gallons out of, that still doesn't work. You know what I mean? And it, to me, well, if you fill one up with five gallons, no, that still wouldn't work. I was going to say, if you, and you fill the other one up with the five-gallon jug. Yeah, that still wouldn't work. I don't understand. To be honest, there was something in trivia about there being like four different ways to do that. Well, I was bored with it, so I just rolled on. <laughs> you say like, well, if you think about it, like if you fill up a five-gallon, so you fill up the five-gallon jug, and then you dump three of that into the three-gallon jug, but you still only have two gallons in the one jug. How do you get the other two gallons? magic yeah <laughs> and he said you can't be an ounce over or an ounce under and i'm like that would be really hard to do you know what i mean like yeah no i i honestly i kind of spilling it to the tippy top i probably should have been paying a little more attention i guess i just 
was bored with that one. I'll look it up, actually. Yeah, I have no idea. That that riddle bored me. Yeah, well, it happened so fast that I was like, wait, hold, hold on. How the fuck did they do that? Because John McClane spits it all out really fast. And I'm like, okay, I do. Build a three-gallon jug, pour it into a five-gallon jug. Fill the three-gallon jug again, and then fill the five-gallon jug until it is full. Leaving one gallon left in the three-gallon jug, dump out the five-gallon jug, then pour your remaining one gallon into the five-gallon jug, then fill the three-gallon jug and add it to the one gallon in the five gallons. Got it. Got it. Okay, yep, that's it. I think so, yeah. Yep, that's it. (laughs) Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. (laughs) <laughs> anyway i don't even remember what was your flaw? john mcclain was way too like hung over to like be able to get, like zeus would have been should have been the one to have gotten that because he's the smarter guy you know what i mean he's the smarter he's one. Like, wait, 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 i just got it uh okay um where was i uh didn't have to okay after a short argument on whether to open the briefcase or not oh wait hold on do, do, find the briefcase do. Okay, yeah. John decides to open it. When he does, an LCD... I already said that. Um, uh, Okay, yeah. Simon's next riddle is, what is 21 out of 42? Zeus figures out that there have been 42 presidents of the United States, uh, of the United States, but is unable to remember who the 21st was. Later, a truck driver tells McLean uh, it it is Chester A. Arthur, and it identifies a school in which Simon claims to have placed a bomb. It is later found to be uh, Chester A. Arthur Elementary School, where Zeus's two nephews, Raymond and Dexter, attend. However, Simon has other plans for a bulk of his explosives, and the bomb the police find in the school is an elaborate dummy filled with pancake syrup. I mean, whatever, right? Um, they're soldiers, not monsters. Yeah, even though they've killed several people as it is, whatever. How do they? Children? But how do they know there weren't children on that busy street? Right. How or do they? You know what I mean? Subway. Yeah. A kid could find it. <laughs> uh, at least it's not a mass massacre of children. Hmm. That's all that matters. Right. As Zeus and McLean are traveling between distant uh, destinations, McLean catches and reprimands a boy for stealing a candy bar the boy comments that every cop in the city is searching for this uh for searching the schools and one could and one could as the boy puts it steal city hall mclean abruptly realizes that the nature of simon's plan quote it's christmas yeah uh it's like christmas out here it's like christmas out here Someone could steal City Hall. And then he steals his bike, and he's like, what? It's Christmas. <laughs> so far, the police have been... She lit. just started doing tallies for every Christmas reference. There yeah. are... I think... And I think... I'm pretty sure that that, that was definitely done on purpose. Well, like, it was. They oh, put yeah, all these Christmas was. references in here it since was. the last there were Christmas movies. It was, because I wrote all that down like, eh, Christmas is... I'm sure really mentioned glad. A lot, That's and then, probably like, one like, of the things that I'm glad trivia, they and I'm like, oh, didn't it was do with this purpose. movie was do another, like, Christmas... Because it would have to be in, in, in New York during the winter, and... I think the whole hot and sweaty, like summer in New York thing, really, it gives it a lot more, like, because it's like it, it definitely looks a lot grittier and mm, dingier. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, not near as much as Predator Two, but because <laughs> <laughs> goddamn, they sweat a lot in that movie. <laughs> um, as far as the lead, uh, the police have been led to believe that. All this is an overblown act of revenge. However, it is a diversion from Simon's real goal to rob the high security vault in the basement of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, which holds the gold of several foreign nations, even more than Fort Knox, which is probably not true. Uh, The need to search the thousands of schools in New York means that the police emergency and federal agencies are all occupied elsewhere uh this enables simon to and his army of east european mercenaries to break into the vault and make their escape with a dozen dump trucks filled with the brim uh filled to the brim with gold bars 
Not to mention the idiot guy at the bank that's like, oh yeah, we had to turn off our security system because it wouldn't stop going off. Uh-huh. Like, who tells somebody that? I don't care who, who you think they are. Mm-hmm. Right. Especially a Federal them. Reserve. Right? Exactly. What's wrong with you, dude? I was gonna say, you fucking I idiot. Do you know what you're like... holding down there? Like, yeah. how stupid are you? Mm-hmm. Stupid. Dude, I wouldn't even tell, like, that's that's that that's a huge one city. Oh yeah, that that's also a he- glaring mistake on the writer's part because that would never happen. No, that nobody, turn, huh? That they would turn it off. That well, not only that they would turn it off. Uh, even if they even if they did have, like, just say for instance, they did have to turn it off. Mm-hmm. That fucking place is going to be on lockdown. It would be on lockdown. And number two, you're telling me that that kind of a place would only have one kind of security system. Well, not to mention if there's an explosion right outside that building. They're gonna shut it down anyway. Everybody's going home, and they're gonna they're gonna lock it down, and nobody's getting in or out. Mm-hmm. It's just, but I'm telling you, they would have to have some purposes. kind of auxiliary system. Yeah, especially if you're you, what were what they? How many billion? Like three billion in gold or something like that. Oh, some, 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 some like crazy number. One hundred and seventy-two billion or something. Something like that. Like that. I mean, it was it was amount. some ridiculous number that nobody would ever be able to. Yeah. And I'm just like I'm thinking their like lives. they would fucking have that place on lockdown with heavy security. Nobody's getting in or out. Nope. Like guaranteed. Nope. Uh, Mc- okay. Uh, McLean and Carver see through the plan. 140 billion. 140, How much? 140, 140, 140 billion. 140 billion. I knew it was in the hundred. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Like we said, billion shouldn't even be a word. No, it's yeah. just not quantifiable. I'm sorry, yeah. it just isn't. Uh, McLean and Carver see through the plan. And catch up with the gangs as they embark their trucks on board a ship. Which reminds me, you know how heavy gold is? Yeah, it's heavy. There's no fucking way, one, that they're getting out of there with that few trucks. Yeah. And 140 billion in gold. Hell, you've seen and number, Zeus. Well, yeah, he and number having, two. He was trying yeah. to carry yeah, that Yeah, he was around. like this. Yeah. And number two, they're going to put them on boats. They're going to no. sink. No. I don't care. Like, come on. Sorry. On boats, well, even them dump trucks wouldn't have been able to help. That's what I'm saying. It. They're not yeah. getting out of there with four or five dump trucks. They, they well, they need, had twelve. I don't care. They'd trucks. need at least seventeen to twenty, at least. Yeah, that's a lot of dump trucks. They're gonna need a lot more. And they dump would trucks. need fifteen. Well, they'd need more boats than they would need dump trucks. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh, where was I? McLean and Carver see through the plan and catch up with the gang as they embark their trucks uh, on board a ship. They are captured and left on the ship with a huge bomb. At this point, they hold a heart-to-heart with McLean, admitting that he and his wife are yet again estranged and Carver trying to convince him to try uh, try to at least call her. Uh, They both manage to escape the ship, but... As the bomb explodes, see now this is one of my favorite parts of the movie. That part where they're coming down that zip, that line mm-hmm. under the ship. For one, you're fucking nuts. Yeah, yeah. For two, though, dude, whenever that fucking line comes loose and it ra- flies through and it cuts that dude in half. Oh yeah. <laughs> like you don't see it very long, but you just like, and it's a yeah. distant shot. You just see this guy fly away yeah, in two pieces. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it was so fucking, dude. I was like, that's that was real. I was like, that was badass. Like, because you don't see it very. Like, it's just like. That line comes down, and you just see him like, he, like upper body, lower body. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, um, they both manage to escape the ship just as the bomb explodes. Simon has led them to believe that the gold was still aboard the ship, and that the whole thing was a plot to upset the world economy. However, McLean ke- guesses that it is yet another diversion, and the gold is safely elsewhere after suffering a horrible headache all day mclean had finally managed to obtain a bottle of aspirin from simon himself based on carver's prompting uh, mclean then calls his estranged wife as the call is connecting (laughs) mclean goes to take one of the pills and a label on the bottom of the bottle shows that they were purchased from a pharmacy in quebec mclean is forced to leave the phone uh, to pursue Simon and leaves his wife hanging on the line. This leads to the a- leads the action 
to a warehouse in Canada where Simon and his gang have indeed taken the gold. There, there they witness Simon's gang being caught by the Canadian police before being attacked by Simon in a helicopter. The final battle ensues, and as the helicopter hovers underneath uh, some power lines, McLean cleverly shoots out the power lines with two shots, destroying the helicopter and sending Simon to join his late brother. Wow, dude. <laughs> Great way to write it. Uh, as the film ends, McLean calls his wife on a nearby phone, payphone, uh, despite worrying about the fact that he left her on hold. The credits roll and the call is connecting. Yippee ki yay, motherfucker. Oh, man. So, my big issue with the ending is um, for one, I think that the, uh, the bad guy went out too easy. Mm. It was just like bang, bang. Yep. Zit, you know what I mean? And it yep. was just kind of like, eh. It was kind of anticlimactic and dumb, boring. Like, oh, okay, he blew up in a helicopter. Dropping his brother off at Nagatomi Tower was way cooler. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, but also, my other thing is, he planned this entire thing out from start to finish in New York City, but didn't. But then was like throwing this big celebration and all this, that, and this warehouse, which, don't get me wrong, was in Canada. Don't ask me how they got there so goddamn fast. Um, but like in Canada, and I'm just thinking like, you didn't think to plan farther than that. Like, you know what I mean? Like you got caught way too easy, dude. Way too easy. Mm -hmm. So I just, it was one of my biggest things like this big elaborate plan in New York city to steal all this gold. And you didn't think to plan past that. Like you, you, you got to the warehouse. Yeah. But until everybody is distributed and paid off, blah, 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 and everything's done, and, like, I'd be, my butthole would be clinched, and I would have, like, I'd have I'd have a plan. You know what I mean? I think that you dream too big when you take $140 billion worth of gold. True. Like, that shit is way too heavy to try and transport any fucking where. Like, and you can't spend that money. Like, just. No, yeah, we, he's like, now we just have to decide on what country we want to, we want to buy. I'm like, why? Like. You're not going to be able to spend that anywhere. Unless you guys are all going to split up in 17 different directions with a truckload each and meet up somewhere and hope that those motherfuckers show up. Like, you're dreaming way too yeah, fucking nobody's big. Yeah, gonna, nobody's going to touch that fucking gold with a 10-foot pole. Because they're like, nope, that's the American government's money. Well, not I just the American government. Saudi Arabia and mm -hmm. China and Switzerland. Switzerland. Like, you've pissed off everybody. You've p plus pissed off the planet at this point. They're going to be coming for your ass. Yeah. Like, there's no way that they would have been able to keep it. That's that's the biggest, that's the most, that's the biggest thing. Like, at least Gruber had, like, like the first brother. At least he had, like, the, you know, like, he had a more of a realistic, like, you know, we're going to go in and steal these bonds and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like, but, like, th these dudes were like, we're going to go steal the world's money. That's like saying. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> that's like, you know. And was it, uh, oh, what's that fucking cartoon, the Minion cartoon, where he's like, we're going to steal the moon. Oh, are you? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. We're, we're going to steal, steal the moon. moon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. like, oh, we're going to steal the moon. Are you? Yeah. Okay. I mean, no, just you're shit not. like that. It's, it's just like, there's no realistic way. I don't care how elaborate your plan is, you're not getting away with it. No. Like, you're, I mean. There, there were two, there were actually two scenes, too, that, that drove me up a wall, just from... A standpoint of like, okay, <laughs> so the first one was the water scene, like <laughs> where the water's coming through that tunnel. Oh, yeah. And okay, so first of all, you're not going to outrun that. No. And second of all, when you, when you get up on that, that truck wow. and he's like oh. surfing it. Okay. That sure. dude, that was definitely a, like, that reminded no, me of look, Escape from LA. All no, day. look. look like, it, you remember from Escape yeah, from oh, LA? Yeah. <laughs> look, was, was it fun? Absolutely. Was it, was it cool as like a, as a action scene? Absolutely. I'm not hating it. Okay. I know the part where he comes shooting up out of that fucking manhole was <laughs> yeah, hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> but the, the likelihood of him doing those things and then also right place, right time with that manhole, right? Yeah. It's it's ridiculous. It's on par with the second one with the whole um was it the ejection seat? 
right? Where they're throwing like 17 grenades in there. Oh, yeah. And he gets in the ejection seat at just the right moment and gets out just in time. That's what it reminded me of. I'm like, oh, wait, it's the ejection seat all over again, you know? Yeah, that ejection seat, though, was. Oh, it's it's way worse. It's way worse. I'll give you that. You're like, hold on a fucking minute. Yeah, I'll give you that. It's way worse. But that's what it reminded me of. I'm like, oh, here we are again. Like, it's, it's, it's equivocal, I guess. And then the second one, I guess it just annoyed me because it was like, why are we, why is that even a thing? Was the scene where they show up in the helicopter to capture them, right? And they're going at it in the warehouse. And they, you know, he's like, hey, here we are or whatever. And the girl like shoots at the helicopter. One, you're not going to, you're not going to hit him with that nine millimeter. You're just not. And two, they look down and go, oh, I think she's pissed. They're not going to be able to see him. Not from their vantage well, point. I think they're that, not going to be able to I think that they one. could see her through the window with the light shining. Because they had the light shining in. They're not going to be able to tell who they are. Maybe. I don't know. I believe nah. more of that than I could her shooting, like getting, like she was just mad because she was trying to get a piece. And... Sure, but either way, <laughs> she's not going to hit that helicopter. Number one. John right? McClane interrupted that and shit. Number two, like, I don't get laid, you don't get laid. Number two. <laughs> The fact that she, you know, that they're like, oh, she's mad. They can't see in there. They can't tell what's going on in there. I don't know. It's just annoying to me. I'm like, that's pointless. I believe that more than some of the other shit in this movie. Oh, I, I sure, but, but like, it, it was a just point. It was a there, pointless scene. There's I guess. a lot of there. Like it's I said, pointless. there's a gl- lot of glaring plot holes and things like for it, sure unrealistic. But the, you know, obviously, you have to set aside. You got to suspend your your disbelief in a lot of things because it's a fucking movie it's an action movie. yeah for sure and it's a diehard movie at that well and you know one thing too um i think that this was more just a bad cut but um when he's beating that dude with the chain i even had him rewind it because like he's beating that dude with the chain right where did he where did he gain the upper hand in that fight yeah like yeah. So he's just beating <laughs> I him thought with the, the same chain. thing well he's beating him with the chain and then next thing you know he's got it around his neck and he's done yeah i feel like we missed like Half of that fight. Yeah. I was like, what happened here? Because he was just getting his ass kicked. And now he's beating this dude with a chain. And then he runs away. I'm like, where did he gain but the upper he, hand? But he was beating him with the chain. And then all of a sudden the chain was around the dude's neck. Oh, yeah, right. Like it was a like bad... You've never like, actually seen him put it... Around his around. neck. Around, he just beat him. And like, then they, they, like they cut that out in the yeah. end yeah, process. And then, like, like we just missed... showed up with him laying there with yeah. know, the chain wrapped around Like we right. missed like half that fight. Yeah, and then the dude Maybe shows up on the boat and they kill him anyway. It was just a bad yeah. cut or something because yeah. they they didn't make it a very believable cut at all. It was just yeah, it was, that that definitely that fight should have been more prevalent in the movie too. Yeah, because they like, built that guy. He was up one like of the this. main bad yeah. guys. He was the yeah. guy who made all the fucking bombs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they built that guy up, and it then was, it was beating the shit out of him there for a minute too. For though. sure. The other thing, um, whenever Samuel L. Jackson screams a certain way, all I can hear in my head is frozen. <laughs> Where is my super suit? <laughs> like, yeah. that's all I can hear. <laughs> it's the tone in his voice. I love mm-hmm. it. He uses the same tone. Every time. <laughs> whenever he would scream a certain way, I'm like, mm, there it like is. I can't unhear it. Mm-hmm. Can't unhear it. It's funny because you hear certain things throughout the movie. And you're like, that's going to play a part later on. Like the part in the truck at the beginning. And he's like, you still playing the lottery? He's like, yep, still playing my badge number 6991 or whatever mm-hmm. the fuck yeah. it was. And I'm like, yep. that'll come back later. Mm-hmm. And of course it does. Look, and foreshadowing. Yeah. I hate it when I, I hate glaring foreshadowing in movies. Like you're like, you know, give me some like shit. That, but then again, I guess you kind of get mad too whenever people bring up something that looks like foreshadowing and then it never goes anywhere later on in the movie. Like, what was the point of this? Yeah. Like, what was the point of this? But then you're like, other times you're like, that was obvious, and I, it was unnecessary. Like, you just wish it wasn't there so easily. Uh-huh. Well, you also don't want it to be, like, too hidden because you want people to understand it, too. Right. And it's, a, it's a fine line to walk, I guess. Yeah. But are you guys, is that all your notes, or you guys Yeah, good? yeah, I'm good. You good? I'm good. You good, Jeremiah? All right, let's rate this bitch. <laughs> let's rug out this bitch. Timestamp. Timestamp. Oh. 128.49. <laughs> 128. I got it. 49-ish. 49-ish. 
69 dudes. 69 dudes. See, that's, that could be a bump of that. 69? 69 dudes built in. <laughs> when would it come into play? I have no idea. <laughs> might be fun to hit every now um, and then. I'm going to go with... Wait, what did you guys go with? We didn't go with anything. <laughs> what the did. fuck are you talking about? 128.49 is what we all went with. No, you guys were saying percentages, right? No. no. The last numbers, that were 128.49. We're not doing the review. We need your review first. I thought we did Rotten Tomatoes. No, we, why do you think that? I don't know. <laughs> every I week. Getting... Every <laughs> time. Every time. We Our never reviews, do that. then Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. Right. She just ain't in it, guys. She doesn't actually like this podcast. I do. I love it here. I love it here. I love it here. As she faces away from the camera, she says it. Like Theo. They're holding a gun under the table. Please help me. <laughs> Blink twice if you're okay. He keeps it. He has it taped here. He's just waiting. <laughs> All right, give us your review. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a six because it was okay, but it wasn't as good as the first one. So I don't know. I just wasn't as interested as it was the first one. Sorry to disappoint, Dad. I know you really like this one. Oh, that's fine. One. I do. Though. I really like the first one. It uh, it brought more to the table, but I just I like the original formula more. Of him by himself with all of his one liners. <laughs> yeah. It was still a good movie though. I'll give it a six and a half actually. It was a good movie. Six and a half. Yeah. Uh, for me, I really like this movie. I've always liked this movie. Um, is it better than the first one? I mean, there's a lot of things that could point to no, but I don't know, man. Watching it this time, I'm like, maybe the first one is better. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I really do. But I really love this we movie. We talked about it. I've been thinking about it. Yeah, like, I used to love this one a lot more than any of them. But I think it was always because of Samuel L. Jackson. And it was more of an open space. Like, it was through, all throughout New York. But the more I think about it, I kind of like the confined thing with the first one. You know, the you know, I like the, the fact that he crawl. had to be on his feet yeah. himself. It, the, the cat and mouse thing. I love that. I, I just like the first one. Yeah. It was like Tom and Jerry. I think I'm going to, I think, I mean, it's still a great movie. Don't get me wrong. I still really love this movie. And it's still better than the second one. Even though, really, after watching the second one, the more I think about it, I still liked it a lot. It was. It's not my favorite of all, by any means. But but I think the third one, I think I'm going to give it an eight. Because it's still, it's still a great movie. And Samuel L. Jackson sells everything he's in. You know what I mean? Like, that dude's, he's a bankable movie star. 100% every time. Uh, so it's just a, it's a great movie. I'm going to give it an eight. So for me that, you know, the actions there, that teamwork, that partnership, yeah. it's there. That's another thing that's great about it. Yeah. Is like him getting a partner. Is yeah. Awesome. Gives, it gives a lot of comedy, gives some depth, um, that, you know, it's kind of missing, especially in the second one. Um, yeah. I feel like you get that depth in the first one because you get it between him and Hans yeah. in a way. It's not a, it's not a teamwork by any means, but it's well he get he gets it a little bit through that cop though in the first one too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So. You get that depth there in the first one in different Carl. ways. Not Carl. Yeah, yeah, you you get it you get it in different ways in the first one. Not exactly a partnership, but you get it. Um, but in this one, you know, you've got that team teamwork and partnership and a comedy. Um, you know, I liked like you said, that open world kind of thing where they're running through and they're doing all these different kind of riddles and things like that. That was kind of cool, but it really didn't hold my attention very well. Not like the first one, not where I was like glued yeah. to the screen. The riddles were kind of, you know. Yeah, I mean, I I get, th I, I get why, but it just didn't. I really it, thought yeah. that it would, and I really remember the first time thinking it was really, really good. But this time it just didn't hold my attention as well. And I, I mean, the first one, I was like glued to the screen, right. you know. Um, and in this one, I feel like it's kind of a light repeat of the first one's, you know, plot a little bit. Cause there's like this, you know, you think the bad guys are doing one thing, but Oh, Nope. Just kidding. They're actually doing this, you know, look over here. Cause we don't want you looking over here. Right. Cause this is what we're really doing. You know, it was kind of like, there was no originality to their, their actual overall arc. 
because it's already been done. Yeah. And um, I just felt that they relied way too heavily on the first one. They relied too heavily on Hans's story and didn't give Simon enough uh, props of his own. And I thought that he could. I thought he could stand on his own. I thought that he was strong enough to do that. It just they just didn't do it. Um, so the fourth one is a lot like this one though too, in a lot of ways. I think that they found a a, a formula that worked in the first one, and then they just kind of kept revamping it and reusing it in certain ways, and and it just it keeps failing because everybody's like, yeah, we've seen this already though. Like, can we get something different? Like, I'm not saying that it's terrible. It's just that it worked so well in the first one because because it was the first time we saw it. And now it's like, this is just a rehashing. Like, you're not surprising me. I need something new, right. you know? So I'm, I'm going to give it, I'm going to go with Madison. I'm going to give it a six and a half because of the unoriginality of that. Okay. Yeah. What do you well, think, Jeremiah? Um, I'd probably give it a seven. Um, I like the teamwork. I loved the first half with the riddles. And then after that, it just kind of followed, you know, I guess the first one kind of your did. basic like, yeah. action movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like me and her, we were talking, she said the first one, I was like, ah, I think I like this one. But after, you know, giving it some go, I'm probably going to have to go back. Probably the first one's my favorite out of them um so yeah i mean i'd have to agree i think the first one's my favorite too. yeah because like after watching them all like especially these three again like the the last two are like they're not like the you know they're not like the first three yeah. they're definitely a lot different in, in a lot of ways yeah and they're more of just straight up action movies you know what i mean like the the fourth one is actually a lot like the third one where there's this main villain He's kind of like, you know, giving him the run around through, you know, actually it, it takes place in D.C., I believe. And it's just like, you know, a rampage through town, essentially. Uh, it's just more explosions and blah, blah, blah. But um, I liked it. But um, I think that with this, these first three, especially, they um, you get something out of the first two that the third one kind of fails to recapture. And the first one, especially with the being in the tower, being the only guy, you know what I mean, taking on this whole group of, uh, of terrorists. Mm -hmm. And then moving into the second one, you kind of have that same thing, only it's more of a homeland kind of deal where you've, you've got American, uh, an American uh, soldiers and things yeah. like that. And that's what he's dealing with. And then in this one, you get like... I think it was supposed to hit harder because you had um, that path of revenge. But that revenge doesn't hit because you find out, well, he's not even on a path of revenge. It's all a ploy to get, you know, to this bank and get this gold and blah, blah, blah. I think if they would have taken away the whole gold aspect and made it more about giving John McClane the run around through town and fucking made it kind like, of personal, made it more yeah. personal. I think it would have hit a lot harder. Mm hmm. Instead of making it about, well, I mean, it's this heist. They could have still thrown in that twist to say, like, look over here, don't look over here, but still make it personal. Extremely. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I agree with that. Like, Because obviously he's not going to have a bunch of henchmen and they're just going to want to hunt down John McClane because right. they killed his brother. Right. So, yeah, they're going to want to get, get they're paid. Gonna they're going to want something. Yeah. But, like, the problem with that is, is that, like, you take away that, like, this is the third movie feeling. You know what I mean? Like, you're going to bring in this dude's brother... Path of Revenge, make it more personal. It's yeah. not personal enough. It never was. I mean, they don't even share the screen, but for like, what, two minutes? Something like yeah. that. An entirety of two minutes, and that was on the boat? That's about it. Yeah. So, it's just... And he commits that, you know, that mortal sin, too, where it's like, oh, here's that aspirin. You're gonna die anyway. <laughs> Any other guy would be like, no, fuck you. You're gonna die with a headache. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like... like well, you're going to die anyway, so here, I'm going to give you this fatal flaw in my plan. I'm going to give you the address where we'll be. Exactly. Like, who, who puts the address of something on the bottom of their aspirin bottle? Yeah. I didn't understand that anyway. Or how he even picked up, like, this is where they are. Like, because of an aspirin bottle? You well, just... but 
I don't know about you. I've never had an asthma bottle that I'm going, oh, you know what? I don't know. I don't, hey, well, I don't, let me like, write this down. My or, evil plan here. Yeah. yeah. Or like, it was oh, even typed too. Like, well, that like, and who? like, even if you did have an aspirin bottle, what's the likely, like with the address on, what's the likelihood that that's where they are? But even, you know what I mean? But, like, but still, <laughs> okay, but, but there's a plot hole. Well, that, but that's what I'm saying. Like, first of all, if the address is on there, where did it come from? Is that where you bought the aspirin? Or was that or, just where it was made? Or what? But it, There's a lot it, of things. It doesn't to it, look yeah. like a warehouse that makes aspirin. He just did like an entire That's like the, the whole gold bullion. He did six months of detective work in like thirty seconds. Well, that's what I'm saying. So, it, it, like, it, 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 it would make more sense that he would be like, "I don't. I'm gonna forget that address. So let me type it." And then glue it to the bottom of this aspirin bottle. That would make more sense. The whole than... plot was just <laughs> a cover up for some dark sinister. They just should have never made it. They should have <laughs> made aspirin. Yeah. He plot. was the guy that did the Tylenol thing in the nineties, wasn't he? Uh, I thought it was eighties. Oh, uh, yeah, whatever. Whenever it was. I think that the I think that the, the boat should have never just left. It out. I think I don't think that the boat should have ever left New York City. I think that they should have never been able to get to that warehouse and th- the, they should have faced off right there on the boat well technically it really should have sunk but right <laughs> but i think that they should have faced off right there on the boat him and jeremy yeah it, yeah it should have been That's done a done deal the right there yeah been, yep like, and down. it should have been between the two of them it should have been you know it, it should have been that that classic action ending where the sirens show up but it's already over he's sitting there all bloody jeremy irons is dead you know sam jackson's sam like jackson's, giving the pat on the back like, yeah like good job man uh, yeah, Here's like, a quarter. yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's you get that you're it's more satisfying it's way more satisfying i agree i just uh there's there's things about this movie that could have made it way better but I mean, the movie's old enough at this point. It's what twenty years old, twenty five. Like no, it's I think that's part of the reason that the first old. one is so great. Ninety five, so it'd be twenty five. No, sorry, thirty 20. years old. It's thirty years old. Ninety five. Be thirty. 30 oh years yeah, old. yeah. Shit. Almost well, twenty nine years old. I was going for some reason. I was thinking, oh four. Mm. Yeah, don't you wish? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that's part of the reason the first one is such a good one. Is you've got that fake great face off at the end. Right. Yeah, just, but you know it is what it is, and I, it's we've got two more to do. Are we doing the other two? <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, we, they're, they're all in they're there. All in, okay, I'm pretty uh, sure. I guess I'll finally get to see the fifth one. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. It's just I've only ever seen the four. I think I, I think I've only seen up to four. I'm being honest. I don't remember the fifth one. If I'd have the seen fifth it. one is. Uh, Probably the worst reviewed because I was gonna say, I it looked, doesn't bring oh, a lot to the table. I, I like the movie. It's a great fucking action movie. I looked up the cast. Patrick Stewart's in it. A good day to he die. He is? He played a Russian general. Patrick Stewart, really? Yeah. I'm trying to remember. See, I forgot that. And too. Shameless. Um, the whole cast? No, 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 no. no. Um, Lip's boss, the one that was an alcoholic oh, and ended up being all fucked yeah, up yeah. and all that. That guy's in it. Wait, you mean her boss, Fiona's boss? No, Lip's boss. Or oh no, no, no! The you motorcycle about, yeah, shop yeah, yeah, guy. Yeah, 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 the motorcycle shop guy. Yeah. Because he uh, Lip was dating his niece. Yeah, uh, his niece. Campbell. His niece. Yeah, him. What was he looking like? The Irish guy. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He that guy. Uh, it's good though. It's got Jai Courtney in it and shit. It's just it takes place in Moscow or like Russia or something. Yeah, that's and it's, it's just it's just a different a setting. It's not as colorful, I guess. And I don't know. It was good. I liked it, but um, a lot of people didn't like it. So probably because it was just your run of the mill action movie with a lot of explosions and it literally nowadays, but it literally people, starts off with like it just goes right into the action. Nowadays, people want plot heavy. They don't care for just straight action movies right. anymore. And it seems like, and at this, and at that point, you're like, why is it everywhere John McClane goes, he finds trouble? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just you're at that point with it. So you like, ever think even, he just gets a Sunday to sit down and watch some football and yeah. drink some beer? Or, I mean, yeah. And I it was, I think it was the whole thing to drive home. You well, think he ever has like flashbacks at Christmas time, just like 
<laughs> Fuck Christmas. <laughs> he starts. He starts twitching like Yippee. Yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. Like <laughs> <"Yippee."> okay. <laughs> He's like twitching in his sleep. He's waking up in nightmares. Yeah. That's yeah. Cold sweat. <laughs> <laughs> Yippee. Yeah, like, he hears two Christmas things. carols on the radio and like has to pull Sends over. Sends him into flashbacks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> two things with Jai Courtney. That was Suicide Squad and Captain Boomerang or whatever, yeah. and then Alita. Which he had an uncredited cameo. So and a what? Alita, Battle Angel. He it had was... an uncredited cameo as. Uh... See, I don't remember him in that movie. He was also in Spartacus. <laughs> Josh Shugan. <laughs> He's probably a robot. Probably some yeah, some or stupid something. shit. He's been in a. Like few I said, he was uncredited. It was yeah. an uncredited cameo. He was in the first so... season of Spartacus too. Did he play Spartacus? No. He was Spartacus' best friend. In I did watch season. Spartacus. So, okay. So, I... if you see him, he's like, he's he's the guy with the curly hair and all that. Yeah. It's the first thing I ever known him to be in. I've yeah. only seen the first, uh, the first season of Spartacus after the actor died. Yeah. I never watched anything else after that. It's good. It's all good. Um, anyway, uh, you got it. What do we, what do we get in? Oh, yeah. We need to get into our Rotten Tomatoes stuff. I got it. Wow. Who's forgetting that? So. What do you guys think for critics? 69. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going to go 62. I think it's higher. I bet it's in the 70s. I'm going to go 75. You got it. It's 59. 59, oh. really? Wow. Okay. What about audience? Audience? Uh, 79. I, say, I bet it's higher for 69. audience. 69. I'm going 75 again. 83. 83? Fuck you, Jeremiah. <laughs> Who let you on anyway, man? Did he win last time, too? Uh, he did win one of them, I believe. Last uh, week. Yeah, one. I don't remember who won the other one. I think For some I reason, did. I want to say it was Jackson, but... I don't know. No, I don't think Jackson did. I think it was me and you. I'm not was sure. Was it me and you? No, 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 because no, I was no, the one doing really the wrong thing. It. it was you. Maybe it was me. I don't, I don't remember. remember. I know you won one of them, though. At least one of them. So, critics' was... consensus. Die Hard with a Vengeance benefits from Bruce Willis and Samuel L. Jackson's barbed interplay, but clatters to a bombastic finish in a vain effort to cover for an overall lack of fresh ideas. That's fair. Yeah. All right. So, a lot of these reviews are just kind of lame, I guess. But the last one kind of made me laugh, so... Uh, definitely this kind of action flicks didn't don't age well. Same kind of stuff that all other 80s movies of the genre. Too bad it was made in 95. Same kind of jokes and dumb lines. Same kind of improbable action scenes, etc. Jackson carried this movie. 100%. I think, I think Bruce Willis does a great job in the movie of being John McClane and stuff, but he carried the first two movies. This one though was definitely carried by Samuel, Samuel L. Jackson. Jackson. You could you could argue for the fourth one too that Justin Long carries that movie because Justin Long is one of the best parts of that movie. He's the comic relief sort oh, of Justin deal. Long. So this one's a two and a half star a standard action movie that could have any generic action hero hero in the title role, but entertaining enough. Uh, one belligerent escapades. Uh, two star, it opens with a bigger setting than the first two and possibly an interesting story. This quickly fades and Jackson screaming over and over again and bullet point action sequences. Then it ends in a jumble of events, none of which seem that important. You're right, though. It does feel like it's just a bunch of needless events that happen throughout the movie. And then here's the ending. Mm -hmm. That's what it felt like. Uh, two star, this film starts off great. However, like so many other films out there, it slowly collapses in its second half, which I thought was annoyingly way too drawn out. I can understand now why there is a 12 year gap between this installment and the fourth. The links to the original film are cliched and the formula is little recycled for this series. But to be fair, there's much more enjoyable action going on this time around. It may be severely average, but I'll be honest in saying that it held my attention a hell of a lot more than the first two classics, in quotations. I was going to say that I did feel like this movie was just like a little bit too long. 
Like, I understand that everything that had to be done was done. Not necessarily. They could have chopped it down a little bit if they wanted to. Mm. I think if they had taken out a couple of things, maybe shortened the runtime by about 10, 15 minutes, and really tightened up that script and the plot holes and everything, I think that the movie would have been received a little better. Because I think that putting Samuel L. Jackson in there and giving them that kind of like buddy cop vibe was a great idea. It was good. It it changed up a little bit, just enough to where you're like, oh, something a little new, Mm -hmm. a little fresh, you know, and you don't have to rely so much on Bruce Willis because you had him for the first two as the, like not only the action hero, but also the comic relief, Mm -hmm. you know, whereas in this one, you don't get as much out of that out of him. You get that out of Samuel L. Jackson. And I think that's a, that, that was a good way to go, but it just kind of like, failed because not because of Samuel L. Jackson or anything, but mostly because of the writing and the length of the movie and kind of make, well, I want to say that it's more because of the writing because of how Samuel L. Jackson's character has to be played as this like righteous, you know, uh, uh, fucking uh, activist kind of deal. deal. And that can be annoying. Like you don't want, some preachy guy on screen for two well, hours. Well, I, I like how he kind of shuts it down at the beginning where he's like, you know, you may care about this, about, about race, but this guy doesn't. Yeah, exactly. And he also... Like, he, he reminds him that there's a bigger picture here at stake. I think it was funny, too, whenever he, like, calls him out for be, for Samuel L. Jackson being a racist, too. Like, mm-hmm. you're a racist. You don't like me because I'm white. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and and it's funny how true that is even today. Mm-hmm. How, how that still is true. Like, mm-hmm. people hate other people. Like, black people hate some white people because they're white and they think they're privileged or whatever. Yeah. And I think, it, you know, nothing against anybody who fights for that stuff, but, you know, I just, it's starting to get really old having it screamed in your face all the time. And I see where, like, and I'm glad it's funny to see that in a movie back in 95 where it's still a problem 30 years later that it's a problem not only with, you know, black people with white people or white people with black people, but just in any and every culture and every race, it's so fucking annoying. Like, when are we going to get over this shit and realize we're all just fucking people? Yeah. It gets really annoying having that shit screamed and all over and with social media and everything, it's only gotten worse. So yeah. everybody's got a chip on their shoulder. Yeah, everybody's well, and everybody's got a fucking voice. They think that it needs to be heard. Yeah. Everybody's important. You know, the thing that kills me with these reviews is how many of them, like dog on the first two. Like if you watch the first two and you hated them, then why did you keep going? Like the first that that last one was like the first two classics. I know I watched Fifty Shades Grey. I didn't continue watching the other two because <laughs> I didn't like the first one. Yeah, if you don't like the first one and then you watch the second one, you didn't like that. Why would you continue with the same third? as Twilight? I didn't like them, so I didn't continue watching them. <laughs> I've only seen the first one. I think that might be the only one I've ever seen. I've seen bits and pieces of like the other ones. I was gonna say because you were talking about the second one last. I think I think I've seen the first one and maybe the second one, and then I've seen bits and pieces of the other ones. I don't think I've watched them. I know I haven't watched the last two or whatever. Mm -hmm. Breaking Dawn. Breaking Wind or whatever it is. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Wasn't there a pair a parody parody. Breaking Wind or something like that? (laughs) But. uh, I've only seen the first one, and then I've seen the TikTok that you showed me where the guy fucking went off the rails because of the fucking fight. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. yeah. Bling the wall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that'll that. help. <laughs> that'll help. Yeah. So stupid. <laughs> All right, so this one's a one star. Die Hard 3 may have shed off the ge- generic and terribly boring plot of Die Hard 2, Die Harder. But it can't match the sheer genius of the original Die Hard with a script bombarded with the unappealing combination of pyromania and racist hate speech and puzzles. Not to mention, puzzles? it's a very... It, <laughs> That's what you got against the movie? Puzzles? puzzles yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think one of the glaring problems with this movie, too, oh. that the other movies don't <laughs> suffer from, is it is really, really just oversaturated with just stuff going on on screen. Like... Mm-hmm. There's buildings and cars and it's just an entire cityscape and it's just there's so much going on on screen and all these different people. It's hard. It's harder to get into and follow because you're not taking the ride along with John McClane anymore. You're riding along with all these other characters, too. 
And whereas the first two were like a little more personal because you're riding along with John McClane. Mm -hmm. Like you're, you are in his shoes. You can focus on what's happening. You're focusing on him and his character and what he's got to do. And and the third one, you're focusing on his character, what the police chief is doing because he's trying to find these bombs in the schools. Then you've got Samuel L. Jackson's character. Then you got Simon's character and all his little henchmen and goons and all that. And there's a lot going on on screen. It's just, it's a lot to follow. It's true. Not to mention a lot of characters that you've never fucking seen before because they don't bring anybody back from the first two. Yeah, where the fuck is Carl? Yeah, he's not, well, he's still in California. I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? He was on Where's the phone in the last Where's, one. You, yeah. you sent him a fax. He can give, he, he could have sent him like a, you know, smoke signal, something. <laughs> At least give him a call. Yeah. Like, oh man, Reach I got another one of these friend. problems over here, yeah. Yeah, like you would never believe what is happening. Yeah, right more now. bullshit. To this. <laughs> it's like it follows me. <laughs> this is some bullshit, Carl. <laughs> uh, another one star. Samuel's Samuel Jackson's breath of fresh air performance isn't enough to save this piece of trash from crashing and burning. Horrible movie stick with the first two. Breath of fresh air. What he screams said? and everything he's in. Where's my super suit? Yeah. <laughs> It's been a long time since I've seen this, and boy, it was cheesy. The plot was quite big in terms of epic involving the whole city for a film of its time, but some of the crazy plot twists were ludicrously over the top to get what they seem what they were trying to achieve. Many parts of the film seemed like plot devices with their parts being pointless. The special effects were rather poor, and the acting all around was very cliche, all apart from Jackson, who was the saving grace of this film and rescued it. I love how people are divided on his character. Mm-hmm. Willis played it by numbers. The bad guys were stereotypes, and all and it all just needed to be over faster. Popcorn fodder, <laughs> and the last one, and my favorite one, uh, half a star. What a poor, poor movie. Very disappointing. A movie that makes Die Hard two look great. By the way, there is no punctuation, <laughs> so bear with me. That was a giant run on sentence. Yeah, you know what that just reminded me of. Uh, what movie was? Oh, they were talking about. We're gonna make House Party one, uh, make House Party one look like House Party two, or some shit like that. <laughs> it was from uh, Jan Silent Bob Strike Back. <laughs> it's it like you're just you're you're literally taking and comparing sequels to to its predecessors, and it's like why, right? Like you you know you know this is all common knowledge that sequels are never as good as the originals. Yeah, most of the time, anyway. What a poor, poor movie. Most of the time, not always. <laughs> Very disappointing. A movie that makes Die Hard 2 look great. Bruce Willis is not even. John McClane seems like he's in the movie to collect a paycheck. The movie is more bloody for no reason. This movie tries to, too hard to me. Too hard being T.O. To me, it's trying to be like Lethal Weapon and it's failing Hans Gruber's brother. Come on, wow. Great plot twist. This movie fails to capture Die Hard 2 sensibility. Die Hard 2 sensibility. And Die it, Harder. Yeah, and it really <laughs> fails to capture... That, that's where it got me. Die Hard... It fails to capture Die Hard 2 sensibility. And it really fails to capture the original sheer genius. Do Poor, we need to go back to the grenade scene with him inside the plane? Maybe. <laughs> like, that, I, what I'm about saying, that sensibility? I'm saying they tried, though. I mean, they had the water scene. They did try. That was more sensible than that grenade scene. I'm just saying. I'm saying they tried, though. They tried to to get the sensibility. They tried. That's all I'm saying. That grenade scene was just ridiculous. <laughs> but I'm saying they tried. Give them, <laughs> give them some benefit. Yeah, they just kept throwing oh, fucking yeah. grenades in there. Like, <laughs> he stands there for a minute, looks at them all, and right. then he gets out. And at like, most, those grenades have gets, five seconds. Good, right. Yeah, and then he gets a good distance away before they even blow up. Yeah. Yeah. At most, five seconds. And it really fails to capture the original sheer genius. Poor excuse for a sequel unnecessary to... An unnecessary to T-O-O this time. The only reason to watch it is... is, And I'm not... Is, is. It is, is. Is, is. Is, is if you want to see a good performance by the great Samuel L. Jackson. Wow, dude. Why don't you that is one dick? sentence. That was all one sentence. No, no... Periods. Was there a period at the no end? No periods. Maybe he is, is, was no. Was there a period at the end? Nope. Oh, lovely. And there's very few... Um, Sir, I give your one star review one star. And oh, there, there's very star. few... Or half a star. Yeah, and there's very few um, 
uppercase letters as well. Maybe you including want, names. Maybe you want Jeremy Irons when, with the is is. Yeah, Samuel is, L. Jackson is, 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 is It's so funny because he's supposed to have this stutter and all that. Like he, he stutters sometimes. He only did it once. Only did, did it once. He yeah. did it one fucking time. Yeah, and yeah, he makes it out like that's scene. how he, he, he duped them. It's like, dude, you did it one time. Yeah. yeah, you did it one time. Well, he did it then, and then he did it uh, once at the end. I know, that's what I'm saying. He he makes it out like that's how he duped them. Like, he when he it does one. it again, it's like, ha ha, that's how I got you. But you did it one time. That He did it again? Yeah. Well, he only the, did it that one scene when Bruce Willis was on the phone with him. Yeah, he did it that He's time. Like, and then here, bone and then later <laughs> and then later then later when um Bruce Willis and him were on the boat and he makes some mention of having like outsmarted them and then he's like i got 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 you or something like that oh, that, God damn, I don't fucking he did it that. he did it in the warehouse or in the warehouse while something. he was talking to all of his oh yeah yeah he's like i got 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 them i, I got, got 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 them yeah yeah oh i must have just as in as if, as over if that yeah. One. yeah as if the, i don't remember that i just remember when they were on the phone and he was like listen here bonehead yeah it was like it was like as if that that uh stutter is what won the game <laughs> Sweet ass trivia with Karen. That's uh, it. Anyway, moving on. Uh, let's get into some that sweet ass trivia. You already got trivia written down. We aren't even into it yet. Two hours. No. She got it written down at um, hour forty-five. I think my time stamps are gonna be all fucked up today. <laughs> no. it's two hours. It's at two hours. Just say two hours. I don't know why I wrote down the time. I think I got distracted. Well, write it down for two hours now that you're putting the cap on the marker. (laughs) Jonathan Hensley was detained by the FBI after completing the script for the film because he knew extensive information about the Federal Gold Reserve in downtown Manhattan. Hensley stated they got all the information from an article written in the New York Times. Bruce Willis suggested... So wait, he was detained because he wrote so much about the Federal Federal Reserve? Reserve. He knew too much. And he got it from an article. He got it from an article that he... Okay. Bruce Willis suggested Samuel L. Jackson for the movie. Jackson was thrilled. He says he's seen the first Die Hard maybe 30 times. Really? She even messaged me on Snap. She really wants some donuts. Maybe. The sandwich board that Bruce Willis wore while filming in Harlem was originally blank rather than text to ensure no one was offended by the racist message. It was added with CGI and post-production. Some television broadcasts use an alternate version where the sign reads, I hate everybody, which is sometimes erroneously said to be the original version of the sign used for filming. But this, too, was added with CGI and post-production. The studio told screenwriter Jonathan Hensley to remove the scenes with McLean walking around Harlem wearing the sign. They only allowed him to keep the scene when he threatened to take the script to another studio. Good for him, though. Yeah, for standing by it. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson said that Zeus is the closest character to my personality of any that I've played. When Zeus Carver picks up the gold bar at the Federal Reserve, he says, damn, this is heavy. Yeah, so this is, yeah, this is what I was saying. A standard gold bar kept at the Federal Reserve weighs approximately 25 pounds. Jesus. Yeah, so. God, you would need. (laughs) When you're saying his name wrong, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. That actually says it. You would need, you would actually need 480 dump trucks to steal all the gold from the Federal Reserve. So I was way off on my mouth. 480. Dump 480. Trucks. So how many boats would that be? Over a thousand? Uh, I don't know. It depends on how big the boat is and how much it's able to carry in weight. Yeah, you think that? I mean, it's definitely going to take more than so. more than a few boats, but boats can carry a lot of weight. Like especially yeah, like freight liners. They, and stuff they like could that? take well. They would be able to take more than dump trucks because they don't have a suspension system. But, exactly. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, they still need more. Definitely more boats. So oh, like they wouldn't be able to do it on one boat for sure. It, it's crazy that they just was like, oh yeah, seventeen will be enough. Like, could you imagine having four hundred and eighty dump trucks alone on a boat of that of any size? That's a lot of dump trucks. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. They put a lot of like they can put a lot of um. Like they put a lot of uh, what are those uh, shipping containers and stuff? Oh on yeah, boats yeah, and stuff, yeah. But but like to put that kind of weight though, well, they put like car, is, they put well, cars there on boats too. Your, yeah, huh? Your foreshadowing too about the, when they said something about um, crime in the city or whatever. He's like, oh yeah, just twelve dump trucks just came up missing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Um, as in the original Die Hard, the German spoke in this mo- spoken in this movie is mostly grammatically incorrect. A few lines are so wrong that they have to be considered gibberish. <laughs> Most notably, the exchange of the fake cops who are given the briefcase bomb by Zeus. I wonder and- if they're like like if the Germans have ever seen this movie. Like, what are they saying? <laughs> well, in the German release, however, all of the lines that were German in the original movie are grammatically correct, fitting the context, and some of the terrorists even have an East German accent. Hmm. Sir Sean Connery was the direct was director John McTiernan's first choice for the role of Simon Gruber. He turned down the role, saying that he didn't want to play such a diabolical villain. Wouldn't have worked anyway. He wouldn't change his accent for no, anyone. So, yeah. could you imagine him trying to say like German words with that Scottish oh, accent? Oh, yeah, that Scottish accent. It'd be Gee, terrible. Oh my god. Um, Jeremy Irons was a good choice. He I was. He was Irons a really was a good, choice. good choice. Originally titled Simon Says, where Zeus was scripted as a woman, and was considered by Joel Silver as the third sequel to Le- Lethal Weapon. Twentieth Century Fox, however, did not agree to sell the script to Joel Silver. Jeremy Irons claimed that someone described his hairstyle hairstyle in the film as midlife crisis. <laughs> Lawrence Fishburne was the original choice to play Zeus Carver, but turned down the part when he recognized when he reconsidered the decision. Samuel L. Jackson was already cast. I don't think he's doing very good. No, no, yeah. he, he yeah he no. wouldn't have brought he's, he's that way kind of too like, tame. Yeah. yeah, he wouldn't have brought yeah. enough life to the character for me. Yeah, it would have been boring. Yeah, no. Uh, McLean driving a car through Central Park was based on a fantasy Jonathan Hensley had about being able to cut through the park to avoid traffic. <laughs> uh, the 2003 R1 DVD version includes the original ending showing McLean and Simon playing a game of chicken with a rocket launcher. In this original version, which I think would have been much better, Simon Gruber and his crew get away with the gold. And a few months later, McLean tracks Simon down in Europe, where in Europe is... Where in Europe is debated. McLean mentions Germany, but people in the background are heard speaking Hungarian. The number on the bottom of the aspirin bottle at the phone booth leads McLean to Gruber. The gold was turned into small miniatures of the Empire State Building and smuggled out of the country. McLean is thrown off of the force with the police thinking that he may have actually been involved in the heist. The game that McLean and Simon play is about riddles that McLean tells Simon. And he is supposed to figure out the answer, or McLean will force him to fire a rocket launcher with its direct- directional arrows removed. So neither will know which direction it will fire in until it's actually fired. The scene climaxes when, with McLean forcing Simon at gunpoint to fire the rocket launcher, which kills Simon. And McLean is revealed to be wearing a flak jacket, which would have saved his life if the rocket launcher had fired at him instead of Simon. The studio objected. A flak jacket saving you from a rocket launcher? No. Uh, I'm, no. I'm not saying it's realistic, but... <laughs> no. This that would have been a cool ending, though. But this, is yeah. the, but this is the part that I'm thinking is much better. Listen. So, I'm not saying that that part, they could have, you know, finessed that a little bit. But the studio objected to the ending, saying that it, saying that it made McLean too cruel and heartless. Whereas screener Jonathan, screenwriter Jonathan Hensley stated that that was exactly the point. To show that McLean had been pushed over the edge by the events of the day, and then sub- subsequently losing everything as a result of Simon. I don't, okay, so it does sound good, but I don't think that him being implemented as, like, as in he was in on it all is a good idea. Like, that's a terrible no, idea. No, but I like the one-on-one face-off at the end. Yeah, like, the, that one-on-one, been cool. the one-on-one face-off is cool, but I don't like the, uh, well, no, I'm not saying they believe that he job. was in on the whole uh, the whole. No, heist. but what would have been cool if, is if they set him up, like, to make it look like he lost his job. You know, so they're like Simon thinks, oh, ha, 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 he's, he's lost everything. Well, you know, but meanwhile, they're actually giving him every means to get to him. Like, we're going to make it look like you lost your job. But meanwhile, you know, here's all this money. Here's how to get, you know, like you're going to, we're still going to back you up, like to get there. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. There's just ways they could have done it better, I guess, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, the original script had McLean reciting the classic dad joke. Simon, you're under a vest during the closing sequence, but this never made the theatrical theatrical release. This is the second film in which Samuel L. Jackson's character steals a kid's bike for police business. Can anyone guess the first film? Uh, Last Action Hero. Mm -mm. Well, he does. (laughs) Samuel L. Jackson? Oh, Samuel L. Jackson does it. I was going to say, I don't remember. Is it The Long Kiss Goodnight? Mm -mm. Let me think. Hold on. He's done it before as... It says this, this is, is the business. this is the second film in which Samuel L. Jackson's character steals a bike for police business. He wasn't a cop in Long Kiss Goodnight. Um, 
Was it Shaft? Mm-mm. I don't know. The first film was Loaded Weapon. Bruce Willis was a cameo has a cameo in that film as John McClane. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> Is this 1616 Beach Lane? No! No! This is 1313 Beach Lane. 1616's three blocks that way. <laughs> Sorry about that. No problem! <laughs> Love that fucking movie. That's it. All right. That was Lethal Weapon. Or Lethal Weapon. Wow. Die Hard. <laughs> not Lethal Die Weapon. Not weapon. Loaded Weapon. Not Loaded Weapon. Not Lethal Weapon. Although, I don't think any of the Lethal Weapons are in there. I don't think they are. And I'll be honest, I don't think I've seen any, but. I've seen all of them. (laughs) Mm. I think I've seen the first two. I don't know if I've seen anything, but maybe parts of all of them. I don't know if I've seen any of it, any all the way through. I don't know. We're going to watch them. I don't know. They're good. I'm not saying I have or I haven't. Yeah, they're really good. You've seen Lethal Weapon 5 and 6. I I have. 6? I don't think there's 6 of them. There's only like four. Sunny. Oh, yeah. I've seen five and six. <laughs> it's always oh, Sunny, Sunny, Mac, yeah. and Dennis. <laughs> I saw they those. They created the, yeah. the Lethal Weapons. Yeah, I did see uh, those. Five They're supposed to be doing another one, I think. I of think course so. they are. I, I saw I saw. Them. And they got a trailer out for Beverly Hills Cop 4 or whatever. Yeah. For Netflix. That looks pretty good. It does look pretty good. Guess so. what? We just canceled Netflix. We ain't watching it. We'll watch it. <laughs> Alright, movie. Oh, uh, what's in the box? What's in the fucking box? Robo-com. Pick something good. Robocop. For the witch. Turtles, for love of God. What is no. It? What is it? Pitch perfect. Seriously? What? Three? Sweet. Why? <laughs> oh, I fucking Dude, love the movie. The third one's great. I love it, but. <laughs> if you want, go ahead and pick something. It's else. out of the box, man. It's out of the box. No, we've been It's the last one. Before. It's the last one. To get it out but of the we way. Just watched it. What do you want me to do about it? This what happened it? something. No, Didn't this happen? This happened with before. the alien movies. This happened but the with the alien uh, movies were good. And then it happened with the Texas Chainsaw movies. The... Two back to back. But at least it'll be movie. done. It'll be done. But another another uh movie franchise out of the way. I wanna watch a horror movie. So watch a horror movie. I want to review a horror movie. We will. It's so watch it and then just that. review it to yourself. Yeah, no. it's fucking good. That fucking sucked. <laughs> 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 All right, so next week. I did week... watch something else. I watched No One Will Save You, that one alien movie. I watch, I went to watch it with Cody, but she fell asleep before the movie even started. Go figure. <laughs> All right, so next it, week though. we're going to do the last Pitch Perfect movie. Thank God, because um, I'm Shut over these movies. <laughs> we literally just did one like what two weeks ago. Yeah, I'm I'm actually pretty happy that they're going to be over with too. That they're what? I like that them. they're going to be done. That they're I'm I'm, I'm glad they're going to be done too. I'm, um, I mean, I'm talking that they're awful. I'm just over it. Yeah, I am too. Uh, uh, all right, so next week too. we're going to do uh, Pitch Perfect three. Don't forget to check out our social media stuff. TikTok, Facebook, uh, X, Instagram, and don't forget to check out Discord. <sighs> Until next week, whenever we do uh, Pitch Perfect 2 or 3. 3. Six. Yeah, three. 6. <laughs> pitch Perfect 12. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, <God>. I quit. <laughs> uh, I <hope> not. <laughs> yeah, I quit. I'm done. I'm out. But anyway, until next week. Okay, bye. Deuces.